Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, welcome to the Anime Mystics Podcast, Episode 5, officially. Woo! Uh, we're going to do a full episode this time. Yes. Video games and anime. Yes. We're not going to split it into two. Um, I'm Roman. I am Steven Sonoskisama. And, uh, well, I have a, quite a few anime news things to talk about today, and... Uh, real quick, today is St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Be, uh, consume a lot of, was it libel? Not libel. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Drink a lot, but be safe. And Eat. don't don't take any leprechaun's gold, because no. they'll come after you. No. Have they ever made le- leprechaun waifus? Lepre- uh, I don't think so. Damn, we gotta look that up. Yo, if y'all know some real 63 Lucky Charms leprechaun... Let's go. Just <laughs> enjoy the day. Drink a lot. Wear green. Don't get pinched. Don't get pinched. As a matter of fact, that's my first question for everybody. Who's your favorite green waifu or husbando? And I'll make it play the game on difficult mode or on hard mode. No, no piccolo. <laughs> no piccolo. No piccolo. Who's your favorite green waifu or husbando? Post in the comments. All right, Roman, what you got? Well, I only have one green waifu, and that's Chile. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Do I have green waifu? I mean, the only one I could think of really is She Hulk. She Hulk was pretty, kind of pretty waifu. Yeah. yeah. She's one of those uh, Death by Snoo Snoo types. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got me on record saying that now. Yeah. Okay, so now that that's out of the way. Yes. Um,. Let's see. Uh, I watched. Oh, I watched the Shield Hero episode not too long ago. Like not today, but a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, showed how much of an idiot the Bow Hero is. <laughs> uh, there was a rumor in a previous episode that the Bow Hero was stopping some revolution in uh, another country. Mm-hmm. And we find out in this one that that's true. He did go and stop a revolution. But he also caused a lot of problems for the people that were living there. Because uh, uh, some new guy just took over and he's taxing the place to hell. Yeah. And they have no money for food. They have no, like, real water. They're just... the people are dying, like, left and right. Yeah. Because uh, he went and did this. Yeah. Uh, same with the... Sword hero who went and killed that dragon and then ended up causing an epidemic in the town next to it. Yeah. Because he just left the body there. I mean. <laughs> right. Um, it, it's an interesting thing because it also happened with uh, with the spear hero. Yeah. Because this was all foreshadowed when they were all talking about the achievements that the heroes were doing. Yeah. And they had all known about it. They were like, oh, bow hero went to go fight in some revolution. And Sword Hero apparently got notoriety for killing the dragon. And Spear Hero, who knows, probably being a dickhead somewhere. But they they had kind of shown all their accomplishments. Yeah. But no one really knew the repercussions of all of it. And so, again, manga readers and... I don't know if it was a light novel, but I think it was. I don't know. I think it's a light novel. Yeah. Okay. So people that read the light novel and the manga are obviously at the advantage and they knew all of that coming in. Mm-hmm. But, you know, people like me, maybe Roman, you know, we're just... We sing, oh yeah, whatever, all right, oh, I slayed a dragon. And then you're like, wait a minute, that's not as uh, as heroic as it made to be, considering what happened in the aftermath. Yeah. So. I, I think uh, I think these guys figure that since it's kind of a video game world, that like video game rules apply. Right. Usually you just kill a dragon and it just, that's it. nothing happens. That's a wrap. But uh, this is an actual real world and it's still going to cause problems because it was a poison dragon too. Mm-hmm. So it was just releasing all of its poisonous gases and... Like all the bacteria from it de- decomposing was just spreading over to the town and killing people because of an epidemic it was causing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he was just. It was cool that he killed a dragon. I mean, I, I heard that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But then I saw what happened. I'm like, well, okay, you should have took care of the body. Right. Um, and Spear Hero, they did say that he was helping some country with their famine, yeah. which, I mean, if the plant was going to eat all the people, then yeah. <laughs> That he did help a little. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> One way to fix the problem. I kind of feel like that was the princess's idea, though. Unless his. <laughs> Bitch lasagna. Yeah, he, I don't think he's smart enough to yeah. locate that cave and take the seed that was in there. Yeah. Uh, she probably heard about it before and said, I think there's a cave around here somewhere. But 
We won't know until we get confirmation about that later, possibly, yeah. if they bring it up. Yeah. Um, so technically, all of the heroes, except for Nofumi, are causing a lot of problems with the people he's helping. Right. Um, and it was kind of like him basically doing cleanup duty. Yeah. So it's all like, oh, they're doing these wonderful deeds, but really it's Nofumi, the one who's really doing the bulk of the work. Yeah. And the two, the sword hero and the bow hero, actually confronted him about it because they heard that somebody was stealing their credit. Remember? Yeah. And he, he's like, do you know what happened to those people that you helped in that town? A lot of them are dying. Yeah. Because they have no food. They're getting taxed. Like, all their money is getting taken by taxes. And the other town, you cursed. Thanks, Dragon Slayer. Yeah. Well, he at least kind of uh, admitted he was wrong. Yeah. Uh, that guy, he's, he's at least willing to go, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Because I think he looked at Reptalia and saw the curse on her. Yeah. And realized he's telling the truth. Yeah. The other guy, he's just like, I don't believe you at all. You're just stealing my money. <laughs> Which is funny, too, because they seemed uh, at the arena that uh, the they, 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 they seemed pretty understanding that maybe he's not as much of a dickhead as people are, are making it seem to be. Yeah. And then he does a 180, and it's just like, I don't believe you at all. Why do I have to believe you? Okay. All right. Like... <laughs> Sword Hero was at least like, he has no reason to lie to me. Yeah. So, he's he's still kind of cool in my book, because he kind of took responsibility and was like, okay, yeah. It was, I, I, I should have done something about that. But, it's Bow Hero, he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> if he keeps this up, he'll be on Spear Hero level in a minute. Yeah. The only thing that'll keep him below Spear Hero, though, is he doesn't have a princess with him that <laughs> everybody hates. Bitch lasagna. <laughs> I'm never going to let that go until the next meme comes out. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, that, other than that, the next wave is starting. Mm -hmm. I did not expect it to be so soon. I know they said in there it was going to be a couple weeks before it actually... No, it was, what, uh, a month? Mm -hmm. It was coming up. And, and, then, and he got new party members, too. Yeah. I was actually hoping he would do what he said, he, what he did in that. Where he, he's like, you get 150 silver and buy this thing off of me. Yeah. And then you can join me. I was like, okay, yeah. well, I'm kind of hoping he just lets them keep the money and... yeah. Do, do, you know, like get more equipment or something. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did. He said, just go get yourself some better equipment because I can't have you dying on me. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, it, you kind of, you saw it coming because you're like, you know, inside he's, he's kind of a dick, but he's not an ass. Yeah. So he, you know, kind of had this feeling that he was doing it for their benefit. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's really a good guy, but you know, you also saw him with uh, Malty's little sister. Melty. Melty. And, <laughs> you know, he can't really trust people that claim that are trying to help him because he got burned pretty bad. Well, but, I kind of understand with Melty because she's in the same family as yeah. the king and right. the princess. And they've screwed him over so many times so far right. Right. that it's a little understandable that he doesn't trust her. Right. Then again, I also was also yelling at him while watching it, going, you know, if you would have listened to her, yeah, your crimes would have been pretty much wiped clean, right? Which, which is, you know, kind of in a, in a bigger, more moral thing, where you can't judge an individual based on the actions of the collective. Yeah, you know, you got to judge everyone individually. So, you know, he shouldn't really be holding bitch lasagna to, and, and the little <laughs> sister to the same standards, you know. Yeah, he should. He should hear. He should have heard Melty out, and you know, kind of gone from there. But you know, yeah, the queen is pretty smart. Yes, she realized that he was going to do this. Yeah, and that it was going to be a little bit before he actually trusted her. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm liking the queen. Yeah, they don't show her a whole lot, but what yeah. they do show, I'm liking her. Yeah, queen is about to, to show up and just regulate the whole house. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. Um, and what what's interesting too is I, I shared this on Facebook this morning. But um, if you took it the look at the viewing charts, and we'll reference this again too later on. But Shield Hero actually is now at like seventh place. Yeah, I don't understand it. I, I think that people are just kind of getting um, not necessarily burnt on it, but it's just kind of like rolling, cruising along right now. So it wasn't like. In the first couple of weeks when it was all, like, impactful and drama and Raftelia's waifu, it's Asuna 2019. And now people are kind of mellowing out a bit. And it is kind of, I wouldn't say formulaic, but it is very tropey in that, you know, he's the main character. He's making his name 
you're understanding that he is he's kind of OP in his own way, so yeah. he deserves the hero title. Um, and I think that that's kind of reflective on the audiences. It's still definitely a top 10 show, yep. but I can also kind of understand, too, people are just kind of putting it in cruise control. So it's not really mind-blowing or really making you go like, oh, damn. But at the same time, it's also, no, it's not the worst. Yeah, It's definitely top 10, if not top 5, at least. But in terms of other shows that are doing, like, explosive, impactful things now... Yeah, yeah, I can see where the people are coming from. For me, it's probably still top five or top three for me personally. But um, yeah, I also have kind of low standards. So, <laughs> you know, everyone's just like, "Oh, it's another isekai," and I'm like, "All right, that's fine. I'm okay with that. That doesn't really bug me as long as it's done well." Yeah, I don't but mind isekai. What's up? I don't mind isekai. Yeah, 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 I've watched a lot of them recently, and they've yeah. all been good. In their yeah. own way, right? Yeah, and they all do something a little bit different than the other one too. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, look at look at Sword Art. Apparently, it took like a half naked chick, only covered by her hair, and apparently voiced by Maya Sakamoto, to make everyone start paying attention to Sword Art all over again. And I'm all like, Yeah, no, nah, I can I can find that online. That doesn't really impress me. <laughs> that doesn't really do a whole lot for me. But you know, whatever. You know how many half naked girls are with their hair covering their bodies? I know, right? And then everyone's just losing their mind, and it's all like, Hasn't Sword Art done? worse <laughs> so you know but hey you know yeah we're uh, we're approaching the next wave and shield hero and so i think that maybe towards the end maybe then another week or two you might see it kind of creep back up the charts but we'll see yeah we'll see and it looks like this next wave is actually going to have an actual villain mm. that female that has the fan mm-hmm. instead of like just some monster like the chimera or whatever mm-hmm so that's going to be interesting. It's the same one they show on the theme. In the opening, yeah. Yeah, in the opening. Uh, so I'm interested to see what she can actually do. You know, no, knowing you saying that and then knowing that the season is almost over, I wouldn't be surprised if that this whole big boss gets like wrapped up in like an episode and then they're just, they end it with them looking in the clouds and being like, our adventure continues. And then season two. No, no, it's a 24 episode anime, so. Oh, it is 24 episodes. Yeah. Then I retract that statement. <laughs> so in 24 episodes from now, that's what's going to happen. So, yeah, they'll finish her off probably in an episode or two still. Yeah, okay. Because everything else has been pretty quick. Yeah. I've noticed that with some of these animes. They've been finishing things off pretty quickly. So yeah, like slime? Yeah, like slime. Every t- I was kind of expecting uh, Charybdis to last a while, and that was like an episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, one episode build up, one episode fight, done. On to the yeah. next one. And uh, I'm expecting the same with this. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think two episodes. Because according to the opening, he's going to kind of lose control a little bit. Okay. Get his curse shield going and then eventually come back and win. From okay. what it looks like from the opening. All right. But who knows? Maybe they'll change that up. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to spoil it too much. <laughs> hopefully. Because themes do that a lot now. Yeah. Where I was just like, okay, well I guess I've just been told the whole story. So <laughs> I know what to expect. <laughs> So maybe I should just stop watching the theme. Just skip the opening. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I have for Shield Hero. Yep, Shield Hero marches on. So do we. And so, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll keep an eye out on it. I'm still gonna get trying to get a hold of the mangas, that's for sure. At some point, I'm going <laughs> to go and, and get on those. Yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out on Shield Hero for sure. Yeah. Still one of my most looked at... Look forward to anime of the, the week. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, so I'm always looking forward to that episode. <clears throat> uh, what do you got? Well, I mean, since we mentioned it, let's just go on about Slime. Ah, okay. So, Slime officially ended. Yeah, surprising. Yeah. Uh, from what I saw, it was supposed to be 25 episodes, and episode 23 ended the series, and I guess the next two are just going to be OVAs. So, yeah. That's fine i i think slime is still in a weird spot i think i i definitely here we are 24 episodes 24 23 23 23 23 episodes later and i do have a better appreciation for it than i did 23 episodes ago but it's also kind of like <laughs> i i i'm like eh it's a thing and it, it it didn't really like impact me as much as uh like like Konosuba or even like ReZero or any of those other ones did. 
But, I mean, it's still a fun watch. It's still good. You know, the characters are still fun. I just... I don't know if it's going to be a show that we're talking about five years from now. Kind of like we're still talking about Sword Art, you know? Yeah. Love it or hate it, we're still talking about Sword Art. Um, Konosuba, another one. Three years, five years later, still talking about Konosuba. Still one in a season three. Still, (laughs) yeah. And, (laughs) And so, I just don't see that necessarily with Slime... But, you know, I know somebody's going to be like, well, you should read the manga. Yeah, maybe. But for what it is, it was still pretty good. It was still pretty solid. And uh, even though I think the plot being told in kind of that Shonen Jump-esque style where it's, you know, the new villain of the week shows up. The new villain gets thwarted and either leaves or joins Jimuru and then we just move on to the next story arc. Maybe that's what my issue was, but... Move too quickly. Maybe. Maybe that's what my my feeling is. But Well, I did feel that the last couple episodes went too fast. Yeah. They wrapped it up too quickly, I felt. Yeah. They should have used those extra two episodes to extend it a bit. Yeah. Uh, but I get where you're coming from with the, uh, you know, they bring in a new villain and he's done in like a day. Yeah. <laughs> like the Orc Lord was done in, what, two weeks? Yeah. Uh, Charybdis, like I said, a week. Yeah. He was done. And those are the only two big villains they faced. The rest of it was just, like, well, as I usually say, world building. Right. Showing Rimuru and, like, getting this huge nation built and yeah. bringing all the monsters together. Which is fine, but uh, I was expecting fighting. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, I don't know if that's just because it's a side effect of, like you said, world building... Or if it's just showing off about how OP Rimuru is. But it's like... I I think that... At some point you gotta show him struggle a bit. And we did kind of see that when he was fighting Medium. Yeah. You you saw that a little bit. A little bit. That didn't really last too long. But... Even like... um, One Punch Man... Even he, apparently, from what I heard a little while, this is a while ago now, but even he met a guy that had pretty much the same powers he did. So it's all like even you know, One Punch Man had a struggle a little bit. So it's kind of like if maybe something like that needs to happen with Rimuru to kind of really be like, okay, now there's some kind of drama, some something to fight for or fight over and kind of reinvent the character or give the character something to... Uh, aspire to yeah you know sometimes you don't need that for a character but I think that that might be something with Jimuru because it, it feels like everything is just kind of happening the same way he meets someone they join him meets someone else they join him it's just kind of like okay everything is, right. everything's just going his way too easily yeah it, it there's there's just nothing it's just nothing you just it, it just formulaic and kind of like oh, alright I did like his one comment, though, in the last episode, mm-hmm. when he's getting the spirits inside of the kids, and the one little girl tells him that she loves him, Yeah, and he's thinking to himself, why couldn't you have said this eight or ten years later, <laughs> <laughs> when you're eight or ten years older? <laughs> Lolicon deny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I even said that in my video, like, at least we know he's not a lolicon. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, like I said, I, I did end up growing some respect for Jimuru a lot more than I did 23 episodes ago but you know I, I hope that in the next one I'm going to keep going with it and, and I hope that we we see a little bit more of him we see him worry a little bit or you know panic a little bit something yeah um, who knows we might have we might see it with this uh, this girl that looks like Shizu now but now she has the greater spirit so maybe we'll see maybe I mean it was getting some kind of reaction out of Veldera yeah uh like he was, like a little worried, I guess. Yeah. Because any other villain they fought, Veldra didn't make any kind of movement or impulse or whatever inside of him. Yeah. But this thing didn't even say it was a spirit. What they say it was like something, like the, from like the future that was gonna give birth to itself or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> weird, but uh, we'll see where it goes. We'll see you next year in 2020 for season two. Yeah, yeah they, didn't, they didn't even hesitate. They just ended it, and then it's like, all right, season two next year. Got to wait a year, guys. Yeah, which I'm also okay with, because that gives time for some other shows to kind of come out 
and get the the spotlight so they don't need to compete with slime. So Yeah, plus it gives them a chance to uh, make it right. Yeah. If they rush too much, then, you know, animation quality could go down or yeah. storytelling. Totally. So, yeah, you got to wait a year, 2020, for season two of Slime. I will definitely watch it because i got to see how it goes. Same. <laughs> Same. Uh, I think it... I think it's about it for slime. So yeah, yeah I mean, so I guess this will, this will be the last time we talk about slime until next year, huh? Yeah, <laughs> unless uh, something else gets announced. Yeah, unless something like maybe a movie. Okay. I, don't know. I don't know if they do a movie. Yeah, maybe right, it's or, too early. Or maybe a summer special or something. Something, or maybe the OVA. Who yeah. knows if it if it's any good? Might might talk about that. All right. Now with that, that's signing off on slime. <laughs> yeah. See you next year. Uh, let me see. What do I got here next? I got uh, Piano No More Season 2. They, I was remember last last time I brought up that well, that one judge was like seriously against him passing onto the next stage of the tournament because he was Japanese and he was too much of a threat to the Polish guy that he wanted to win. Uh, well, his plan did not work and he ended up making it to the next round, the top oh. 12. So, uh, however... Uh, Kai, his friend, um, uh, I think it's, it's Ichinose, something like that. Okay. He did not pass on. Oh. He did not make it through. And this episode was focused mainly on him and his feelings about not making it through. Because uh, during this competition, I guess he found his own sound okay. playing the piano. Because before he was just like kind of playing, but not really his own way. Okay. But during the competition, he started... See, he, he figured out how to play like his own way and still make it sound good. But his dad was super worried because he's like, you're making a lot of mistakes. The judges are going to look at that. Why did it have to be during this competition? You know. And uh, he ended up not passing because of it. Hmm. And now he's like super upset because, one, he was going to go and leave the arena. And Kai is there. And he's walking up to him smiling because he did not hear the announcement of who won yeah he knew he passed but he also thought Shue passed the guy because uh, the Polish guy <laughs> that judge wanted to win came up and said oh yeah you should go congratulate him it's like uh, you're just setting him up for failure <laughs> so he goes over to him smiling and he he gets super upset about it like are you mocking me like I didn't pass and you're over here smiling and he's like, uh, I didn't, I didn't know you didn't pass. Um, so I was mainly following him throughout this entire episode to see how he, I guess, gets over what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he did yell at Kai later on, telling him that he really hated him. Really upset Kai because he thought he was his friend. Uh, and then he was, he like kind of stayed away from his house for a while slept outside <laughs> just going all out you know I, I love how the Japanese can make everything so dramatic like even like competitive piano recitals apparently are so so epic now <laughs> wow well it also kind of made a little sense because his dad was also making a big deal about Kai yeah. like if you don't beat him you're not getting anywhere as a pianist jeez so no pressure yeah and then he lost so it's like, okay, I guess I'm just done. <laughs> but his piano teacher was like, all right, well, we'll get together. We'll talk about what's going to happen next. Because uh, you're, you're not, you, you got more piano playing to do. So we'll, he's, 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 he's doing fine now. He figured his feelings out. Okay. And he's uh, on his way to do his own thing. Cool. But hopefully he goes back to Kai and says something like, you know, I was angry and I didn't. My emotions got the better of me. I don't actually hate you. Right. You know, stuff like that. Because uh, that might affect Kai's playing during the competition. Because now he's just going to be thinking about that. Oh, man. <laughs> this sounds like it's getting intense. Is this going to... Is this 12 episodes? Or? It's 12 episodes. 12 episodes. Yeah, so it's going to go into next month. Okay. Because um, it did start late. It started yeah. later into the season. Uh, and we're only, like I said, six episodes in. This episode 7 should come out in a few days well it sounds intense it's pretty intense and now I, I like I'm gonna start 
looking at Polish people like more judgmentally now. Like, why don't you? Why don't you like pianists, huh? What you got against pianists? <laughs> they want to play piano too, you know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds fun though. It's uh, it's good. I like the series. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the final season or not, but mm. I'll find out when they get to episode twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Summer special piano no more. Yeah. Beach episode. <laughs> Beach episode. <laughs> uh, hot springs. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got on that though. All right. Um, I'm not, I mean, I know you don't watch it, so <laughs> no real discussion there. <laughs> yeah. No. I, yeah. No. I'm just listening to you, and uh, I am learning a lot, so it, it's it's nice. Feels good. It's a good one. I would recommend it if you have like time. Sure. Check it out. Okay. Eventually. All right. What do you got? So, uh, for the only other one really that's here on my list that I'm up on is Kaguya sama. Ah, okay. So, I guess Love I'll... is War. So, two things. One, I took you up on your offer, and I've just had, like, on nonstop repeat the opening theme to Kaguya sama. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, it's really grown on to me because it kind of has that listening to the full song over and over and over and over and over it has that like kind of 70s Motown feel to it you know like a song that came from our you know from American music channels yeah and it's you know really really like that it gives me those kind of vibes and so it, it kind of caught me off guard but it's definitely one of the best songs of the season now for me yes I, I definitely have a better appreciation I, I, I did kind of like it when I first kind of heard it casually but Again, listening to it on endless repeat now is just kind of like, okay. No, I really, <laughs> really appreciate it more. Um, so that's kind of the first note. The second note is um, Chin Chin. My third note is <laughs> I, I Kaguya Sama, actually going back to the charts, is now number one on the chart. It's yes. now, it's overtaken everything else. Promised Neverland, JoJo. Uh, I think last week number one was Dororo. Dororo. It overtook over Dororo. That. Uh, it overtook slime over everything. Oh, it was shield, ballistic shield hero. It it's now number one, and um, I, I don't didn't know because I mean there are memes. People meme the hell out of it. Oh yeah, and it's like you see people talk about it, but like no one is like gangbusters talking about it. Not like on the level of like shield hero, for instance. Right. Uh, so I, you know, it's really interesting, but it's kind of like, I think people, they don't talk about it because they're either making memes or they're just voting for it. And that's how it ended up as number one. But, um, I can also see too, because it's kind of like, I feel it didn't get hilarious until about the fourth or the fifth episode. Cause it was kind of like the first episode, it had some funny parts to it. And the, you know, the other episodes kind of had funny moments too, but it wasn't really until the middle of the season that it just kind of really hit the gas and just was like, boom, now it's, now it's fucking hilarious. Amped up the comedy. Yeah, now it's it's absurd and it's good. Um, not that it wasn't good before, now it's just better. And it's yeah. it's really funny. It's in your face funny. And uh, you can see the, the diverse characters, the diverse cast. You know, maybe it, all, it could have been too when you're talking about characters in this giant prestigious academy. But you're really like, well, what's the honest difference between, uh, you know, the main character, the dude, and Kaguya? They're, they're both rich and smart and elite. It's kind of like, all right, just go ahead and get in bed already. Marry, get marry each other. God. But then you really, yeah. again, start to see their different personalities and about he's not really rich, but he does work hard and his dad works hard to get him in the school and his dad is voiced by Koyas Takehito, which I still enjoy. <laughs> Uh, versus Kaguya, who has pretty much the whole world on a platter, and he goes to school on a bike. Yeah. So it's kind of like okay, you, now that they're becoming their own separate characters and their own personalities are really coming out. I think that that's really helping the series, you know, come out and stand up on its own. And of course, it's and, and Chica as well. Chica is getting more and more unleashed every week and so as, as Chica comes out Chica is just kind of like the foundation Chica is the bedrock that all the jokes kind of lay upon uh, and that's probably why she's like in every scene and almost probably. every joke like Chica is there if she's not there she like set it up for them so um, I know Chica was like number one girl like uh, this on this chart or was it last week's chart I mean I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was both I weeks. think last week and then I think Kaguya took over Kaguya became okay, yeah, yeah, sick Kaguya. 
Everyone loves sick Dede Dede Kaguya. Jeez. Yeah, that was that was cute. Yeah, I got I, even I have to say that was cute. <laughs> I yeah. hardly use that word at all. Uh, I have to use it in this instance. Uh, <laughs> Dede Dede. Yeah. Um, I did find it kind of funny how she was upset that he didn't try anything <laughs> when they were in bed together. Yeah, when she had her flu. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I didn't do anything. I swear. And she was upset that he. She thought he did something, but then afterwards was upset because he didn't try anything. As girls are confusing. <laughs> Especially when they're rich and under the influence of the flu. Yeah, you can't win. You, you, yeah. Um, I did, oh man, I did get a little upset at Chica this week. Why would did I? Did you watch this episode? I haven't seen this, this weekend's episode. Ah, okay. Not from a couple days ago. Should I talk about it then, or should, do you want me to... Uh, you, I mean... We can come back to it. We'll come back to we'll it. We'll come okay. back to it. We'll, we'll say. I'm not that. gonna say that I was like incredibly upset. I was like, oh god, you're 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 dead to me now. <laughs> it was just kind of a really kind of moment. Like, got it. Just a little disappointed. Yeah, a little disappointed in Chica for a moment, but I still like Chica. <laughs> As well, you should. Yeah, and Ishigami. He was yeah, he was Ishigami. great in this episode. All right, uh, and last episode too with the sickness. Oh. When he when they were playing the game, yeah, and he's like, "How shameful can you be?" When he was calling out Chica, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he he won a lot of convertees, and that's why yeah. he, he like jumped up on the male chart, male characters chart. He jumped out of like nowhere and he came up like sixth place or something. Now he got me. It's like what? All right, no, he was almost like in the top three. I thought he was in the top. Three. Yeah, he was because uh, I have a friend who cosplayed him recently. And I, I tagged him in the post. I was like, bro, you're going for the belt? For the championship belt? I was like, damn. I mean, he's not even the main character. <laughs> he's, so like, yeah. he's super popular. Super over. So, yeah. Interesting. He's great, though. He is pretty funny. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He's, he's pretty good. He's definitely, I don't know, one of my favorite male characters this season. Because he represents us all, really, on the inside. Yeah. Because so, he's not wrong. No. I and mean, then he just gets treated like he's wrong. Yeah. Now, I also appreciate his work ethic, too. He's just all like, I, I'm just doing this for doing it. I don't really actually want to be here or do this. I just want to go home and play video games. Yeah. So, That's definitely all of us. That is. And he appreciates the big ones and the small ones. Uh-huh. Maybe the big ones a little more. Yeah. Like, it should be. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> but... Yeah, I, I I do understand I have homework. I need to get I need to watch the latest episode. So okay. I, I will do that and uh, I guess we'll do a follow up on the next episode. The next podcast. I will be caught up, I promise you all. Yeah. There's only two episodes left now, isn't there? You think I believe so, yes. That was episode ten, so there's only twelve episodes. So we're almost done. It's gonna be it's gonna suck when the series is over. I know, right? <laughs> we have to be one of those losers and read the manga. <laughs> I know, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All those that have read the manga. Man, there's like 170 chapters though. Oof! It's been out for a minute. Yeah, there's 13 volumes. Oof! Uh, so, <laughs> jeez. I don't know how long they could stretch that out though. I mean, it's just them in high school, and then aren't they like in their second year? Yeah, he's in his first year, right? Yes, she's in. Is she a first year or second? There's, they're both either. Yeah, I think they're second years. They're all second years except for Ishigami. Ishigami is the only freshman. Ah, that's right. Yeah, he's the only one. Yeah, so he's the youngest, and he were, and they're all like Chika and Kaguya went to the same school. So okay, that, yeah, okay, that that does sound right. Uh, but I think that's all because, like, well, I mean, we're gonna wait until next week to talk about episode yes, ten. Yes, yes, I will. So. I will get caught up and report back to you guys. I'll, I'll have that homework done. Okay. Um, but yeah. If you're not watching it yet, watch it. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're not going to be disappointed. Yes. You have until the end of the season. Yeah. Um, let's see. Next on my list, I only got two other shows on here. Okay. Uh, my obligatory Bang Dream season two <laughs> talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, we did get a conclusion to the whole uh, Otai going over to Raz situation. Okay. Because uh, at the end of episode 10... Yeah, they're, they're on episode 11 right now. At the end of episode 10, the lead, or the leader of uh, Raz, her name's Chu Tu, <laughs> uh, came up to Pop and Party saying that she wanted them to hand her over to her. Because uh, she wants her as their full-time guitarist, not support. Um, 
Poppin' Party was actually at their show and saw her play in their band, and they were kind of like, are we holding her back? <laughs> like, should we even stop her from going to their band if she wants to? And she, Bowtie was pretty much like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> but they told her, you know, go think about it. You know, like, really think about it. But she was pretty, like, set. She did not want to leave pop a party at all she had already told you two that she was leaving their band to focus on just pop a party so i don't think there was really any need for the discussion or anything because if they would have just asked her do you want to go she would have been like no <laughs> <laughs> um it was still a pretty emotional episode yeah. um because the rest of the band they, they were trying to do what they thought was best for her like if she wants to go on to this other band then we shouldn't stop her because she might her potential might come out a little more as a guitar player but they really did not want her to leave uh and that was shown at the end when they all got together to find out her answer on whether she was going to leave or not and she actually wrote a song uh portraying her feelings on the situation and about them so unfortunately there was no subtitles for the song so i have <laughs> no idea what was said <laughs> but they all basically came to the conclusion that we don't want you to leave, but we thought that we would be holding you back. Uh, and she was like, no, I don't want to leave at all. I want to stay with you guys. So next episode, they're going to go to Chew 2 and say, yeah, she's staying with us. Uh, you can't have her. But I still I still feel like they need to tell Chew 2 at least. You know, we know a guitarist that you can have. <laughs> a really good guitarist that has no band that she's playing with and has actually been looking for a band to play with. Hmm. We know somebody who you might might like. So this sounds very Love Live ish, does it? Yeah, it sounds a lot like Love Live, and it, it's kind of all like we're in a pop band and we sing pop music and now drama. All right, <laughs> so I have a question. So Bang Dream fights Piano No More. Who has the better drama? Uh, well, I would say Piano. Okay. Because I mean, it's it's a drama. I it is a drama. Okay. It's, it's a more of a drama than it is anything else. Okay. I don't. It's not supposed to really. It's got some comedy, but it's not supposed to be like super funny. Got it. Uh, so yeah, Piano No More is more, more dramatic drama. than okay. Bang Dream. Like okay. this is like the only episode that really had much drama. Got it. In it for Bang Dream. Got the rest it. of it has been pretty funny. Like I, I told you, one character jumped from a third story window, and did cartwheels afterwards, and they also had a hot air balloon uh, in the shape of that pink bear you see. <laughs> <laughs> also, right. that pink bear had an Iron Man-like suit that she was using to fly around the sky. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, folks. So, play the mobile game. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that happening in in Piano No More. <laughs> my goodness. Um, but yeah, it was. I don't know. I think I just got confirmed that it is only twelve episodes a season because. Mm. And, uh, my anime list usually tells me how many episodes the season is, and they just had question marks for this one. Oh, well. But uh, on Twitter, uh, one of the Bang Dream uh, pages actually posted that each new single coming out for each of the bands is going to come with two episodes of the second season, and it only went up to 12. So, 12 episodes. Um, so I only got one more episode. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then the anime directly correlates with the game um i think it does i've okay. heard some people say they don't think it does but okay. they've had stuff from like events in the game make like be referenced in, in the, the show in the anime. okay um so i i believe it does actually correlate with the two okay. um and i i like that <laughs> right yeah it, it's definitely it's a drive you know it's like you see it in the anime and you want to go do it in the game or vice versa, you see it in the game, but you're like, oh, I wish this was expanded on. Or, you know, maybe there's a story to be written, and then you go and watch it in the anime, and it's just kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. So that, that, that's pretty good. That is uh, pretty intuitive that it, it does that, that, you know, you can jump from anime to game, game to anime, and it just kind of, like, flows. Yeah. So that's actually pretty good. That's pretty cool, I think. Mm -hmm. um, oh, God, I had something in my head that I was going to talk about for that. but Song? Music? Character? Story? Something about the story. Game? Oh, what was it? Uh, the only difference between the game and the show yeah. is um, everything in the game takes place a little after the first season. 
while this is like a year after the first season for the second season of the anime. Got it. So everything that happens in the game is stuff that happens before what is happening in the anime. Got it. Um, for those who might be a little confused if you start playing the game and then wonder, well, why isn't this going on? It's because it takes place after all of this. Uh, and they did just start in Japan the second season for uh, the game. Got it. In, uh, in Japan, they started the second season for that. So maybe season three will correlate with that one. Nice. A little more. Have they announced season three? Oh, yeah. They announced that when they announced season two. <laughs> All right. They gave an announcement. They're doing Garupa Pico, which was that chibi anime they did, 26 episodes. <laughs> That's already over. And then they said and season two and three. Wow. Season three comes out in October. All right. There you go. Well, you guys can take the summer off. Yeah. I'll see you in fall. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that that's pretty much all I got for season two of Bang Dream until next week when I get the season finale. All right. So um, next podcast will be the wrap-up on Bang Dream. Yep, until October. Uh, at least for the anime, because I still got the game to talk about. <laughs> You're not getting away from it, guys. <laughs> it's like the FGO talks. <laughs> oh, boy. I feel called out. And now the final anime I have is Hinamaru Sumo. Okay. The sumo anime that I've been watching. Uh, the very, well, the actual Shonen Jumps <laughs> sumo anime. Uh, I think there's only two episodes left this season. Because it's 24 episodes. They just did 22. I had to watch two episodes because I missed last week's. Uh, it's kind of looking like a repeat of the last match they had. Okay. So the last match, they it was pretty close. It was uh, They ended up winning 3-2 out of the matches. And this one, so far, they are... Two and one. Uh, they've lost. They've lost two matches and won one. Okay. But they got to get Hinamaru to face the main dude. His name's Kuze. He's the uh, son of a Yokozuna. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. Shonen Jump. Yeah. And um, he's been like his biggest hurdle so far, even from the beginning. All right. Uh, actually, even before the beginning, when they were kids, he dislocated his shoulder during a sumo match. Because Shonen Jump. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, they actually had one of the guys that always wins. He lost his match, which I was a little surprised by. I was hoping they would give him the win because he was fighting his brother. <laughs> Got it. But uh, he ended up losing, so I was a little surprised, but also not surprised. Because Shannon Jump. Yeah. You know, it's his brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then they had the captain fight. He can only really fight for 20 seconds. He's got, like, a condition where his his lungs aren't very strong. Okay. So he, like, loses his breath really fast. Uh, so he can only really do a match for 20 seconds before he starts passing out. But in, it, within those 20 seconds, he's, like, the biggest badass of everybody, right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Because Shonen Jump. Because Shonen Jump. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, can just, you can see all the tropes. Um, <laughs> because Shonen Jump. But yeah, that's cool. That's good. And then they did the other match. This guy named Yuma. Okay. Uh, He does a lot of strikes. Like, just hitting. Uh, But he did start throwing in a few, like, uh, grappling moves. Okay. Uh, And he was facing a dude that was much bigger than he was. Hmm. Like, I think the guy was maybe twice his weight. Well. Kind of looked like John Arbuckle. Uh, if you ask me, with the face. <laughs> Man. Uh, Real quick, if you guys know who John Arbuckle is, <laughs> respond in the comments. Who who out here knows? We'll, we'll, I'm going to make a note to, to answer that question, too, for all those that don't know who John Arbuckle is. But if you know who John Arbuckle is, post in the comments. I want to give you a shout-out. All right, back to Sumo. Yeah, he kind of looked like John Arbuckle, like the face, like the eyes look <laughs> like they would be from Garfield and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, oh man! But he's uh, he's apparently really good. Ended up beating Yuma. Uh, oh wow! It, it's what kind of gets me with this one is it kind of seems like they they have it so you don't in these last couple of matches they have it so you don't really know who is going to win. Right. Like um, it could go either way. Okay. And uh, I kind of like that because usually you get a shonen series and it's like well the, the, he's going to end up winning anyway because yeah. it's, he's on the good guys team right and I do the quotes air quotes because 
technically there's no bad guy in this. Yeah. It's sumo. They're just, you know, in different schools. It's just competition. Yeah. But it's shot and jump. Yeah. So usually the good guy ends up winning. Right. But uh, in this case, he ended up losing. So, you know, it was, it was back and forth. And I wasn't quite sure who was going to win. I was actually thinking Yuma was going to win. <laughs> but he ended up losing. Interesting. So, yeah. And then they got the captain of the team going to fight next week. Interesting. Um, and then the final episode, I'm assuming, is going to be Hinamaru's match with uh, their top guy. Nice. So so that's also ending this season? Or? That's ending this season. Like okay. I said, two more episodes. It should end by the end of the month. And was this a continuation or was this a season one? Or No, this was uh Well, it's a season one. Okay. But uh, it was 24 episodes, so it did okay. continue from last season to, to now. Okay. Okay. Fair um, enough. And um, is it going to keep going, or are they going to take a break? I don't know. I don't know okay. how, what, how far the manga went. Because I know it is based off of a manga, you know, Shonen Jump Shonen and all Jump. that. Um, so I don't know where it ended in the manga, or if it's even still going. Got it. Um, so I don't know if they can do a second season, or if this is just the whole manga in a 24-episode anime. Got it. Okay. Well, I'll have to look that up. Sure. And when, yep, yeah, just report back. Yeah, I'll let you all know what happens. Dope. Uh, cool. Whether he wins or loses, chances are he's going to win. But <laughs> shut and jump. <laughs> but again, like I said, they have been making it seem a little less uh, obvious okay. that people are going to win. Okay. All right. Sounds fun. Sounds good. Trying to keep it exciting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as far as anime this season, that's all I got. I- <laughs> okay, so I went on to uh, this. Well, I get a bunch of emails from this place called Otaku uh, E News or something. Okay, like that. Um, definitely a lot better than Anime News Network, <laughs> uh, who just says like season three of this confirmed, and then they go into the article and it just says yeah, season three is confirmed. No information, and, no details. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Um, now I didn't write down a bunch of e- like details or anything, but I did feel like some of this stuff could be talked about. Okay. Like, discussed. Sure. Uh, now, this I, I only bring this one up because, I mean, I liked the sumo anime, so maybe I'll give this one a shot, too. Okay. It's a manga called Tri Nights, a rugby anime. Oh, boy. That's been announced. Okay. Um, again, uh, another sport that I really know nothing about. I do not know a lot about rugby, except that it's... Basically, soccer and football put together. All right. <laughs> like, American football. Yeah. Um, but no, like, equipment, no pads, no none of that, no yeah. helmets. Yeah, pretty much. Oof, okay. So they're making an anime of this uh, manga, Tri Nights. I don't know a whole lot about it. I have to look look it up a little just so I can get some kind of information about it. No, no. do the Japanese have a rugby team? I think they might. Wow. I think so. Um because I mean, it's like I know that they do baseball and they do they do soccer. Yeah. Uh, they they have now been getting into golf. We're we're starting to see a lot more Japanese golf players. Uh, basketball, they, they they do basketball a bit. Yeah. Um, I do have a friend that actually lives in in Japan. I, I've seen you know whenever I go out there, I usually hang out with him, and he informed me that they do actually follow American football. So, like, in some of the bars, the the sports bars out there, they'll actually just have some form of ESPN out there where they're actually, they show American sports teams. And in particular, they're pretty fond of us here, the California Bay Area. They're fond of our teams. And, you know, when, when our basketball team, the Golden State Warriors, when they were having their run over the last couple of years, they've actually been following them, too. So, okay. like, the, the California Bay Area sports team, they really kind of like. Awesome. Uh, but that's really an interesting thing. I haven't heard, ever heard... Japanese and rugby like in the same discussion so that's kind of interesting that they picked that yeah and, but I mean then again they did have Ice Shield 21 they did yes with, uh, the, the, American the American football, football team yeah yeah so it seems like as long as they can they know and they know enough about it yeah they can do, do a series let me look this up and see if Japan actually has a rugby team Okay. Because I don't want to be on here saying that they do and then be Yeah, ready. no, that, that's understandable. Because, again, it's just something that's never been been heard of, or at least to me. You know, maybe there's someone out there saying, like, oh, yeah, they've had a rugby team since, like, the 80s, man. It's like, I had no idea. You know? Uh, yeah, they have the Japan National Rugby Union team. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, it looks like their little symbol is, what is that, Sakura? Yeah, that's the Sakura, yeah. Yeah, Sakura. 
Um, not Naruto, Sakura. I mean, you know, like the cherry blossoms. <laughs> uh, I was going to make something about a useless joker. But yeah. Anywho, carry on. It says they are traditionally the strongest rugby union power in Asia. Wow. Uh, and has had mixed results against non-Asian teams. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you know, to be fair, mixed results is still better than being, like, awful. Yeah. So, no, like I said, they, know, have, they have not won a match against right, a non-Asian yeah, team. Yeah, you know, mixed results is passable. Again, considering that in, if this was, like, Europe, yeah, I would probably put my money on a European rugby team whooping the Japanese rugby team. Yeah. But to go out into the world and have mixed results when it's not, like, your forte or your brand and coming away with mixed results, that's okay. I can accept that. Yeah. You know, if if you know if they came over to America, if the Japanese came over to America, and started playing us in American football, and they started losing, I'd be like, well, that's that's just how it's going to be, man. That's just too different in, in cultural and in, in the culture of sports. Yeah, I wouldn't see us losing most of the time. But if they came over here and started playing American football, the Japanese started playing American football, and they had mixed results. Then I would be all like, okay, maybe the Japanese could have something going on here. So that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. If and, that makes sense. And with the way the NFL is trying to branch out to other countries. Yeah, I true. Can, I can see Japan trying to get in on it. Yeah, probably. Like I said, they've been trying to get into, into golf. And we've seen a couple of like Asian players get into basketball too. So, yeah. you know, it, it could be. It could be that the Japanese will start expanding into other sports too. So, yeah. interesting choice about rugby, but okay. Yeah, so I'll, whenever that comes out, I'll definitely check it out. Because, again, I was not expecting a whole lot from the sumo series. Yeah. So maybe rugby will be another surprise. And what's always fun about these, like, the sports ones in particular, is when they do those dramatic slowdowns, or where they're inside the character's head, and he's all psycho-analyzing everything that's going on. And in, in, like, the case of, like, the football show, it's like, he's all thinking of, like, oh, man, I'm going to cut to the left, and then I'm going to run down, but then I'm going to cut to the right and catch the ball. And it's like, in real life, bro, you would have been sacked by now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You wouldn't have this much time to think to your head, dude. You already... the the. The ball would have already been intercepted, or you would have been knocked out of bounds, or you just would have been, like, tackled. Yeah. So it's always kind of fun when they do that. You know, and then the dramatic slowdowns, and... Yeah, it's... it's Oh, man. I would like to say, but Shonen Jump. But in this case, it's, but sports anime. Yeah. It's, so, they have their own little tropes that they follow. Yeah. And you can usually call them out as you see them. Yeah. Or like if it's like a baseball anime and they like they fear the pitcher because he's really good at the knuckleball. Oh, <laughs> you know, and then they're like his nickname is Knuckle, you know, or something. And then you know they say it in the in the Japanese pronounced, so it's actually like Nukuru. So you know, Oh, uh, man, sports anime, sports anime. I need to watch more sports anime. They're fun. Uh, they are. I don't think I could ever like sit there and watch it. Like seriously, watch it. I mean, I don't. I'm trying to think if I ever seen like a you know they considered free a sports anime. Well, swimming, swimming, so, right? Yeah, I can see that. I think the only ones I've really watched, I've watched Hajime no Ippo. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've watched Ping Pong the animation, which okay. was really good actually. Uh, and now Sumo. You know what? Thank you for mentioning Ping Pong. I I am a fucking liar. I watched all of Hanebato, Badminton the anime, oh, and that was yeah. just last year. So, no, I am a liar. I have seen sports anime. But to be fair, Hanebato, it did have all the tropes like the slowdown and the super over-the-top drama. But it also had really good animation. Oh, I also, I've also seen a few episodes of Haikyuu. Haikyuu? Okay. Yeah, the volleyball one. Yeah. Uh, I did want to check out that badminton one. Yeah. I mean, right in the opening scene where they, uh, the uh, Ayasaki and... Um, Oh god damn. Uh Ayano when they were or, yeah, Hanasaki and Ayano when they're playing in the very first one, that was like probably all of their budget because of how well animated it was. <laughs> but they they actually are really consistent. I don't even think that there's really a whole lot of animation drop off during the actual like badminton matches. Right. There's not a whole lot of drop off. So what you saw in the first episode of Hanebato is actually pretty fairly consistent. Um and again it's it, there is kind of like superficial drama throughout that they're, you know, like, oh, I don't want to be my mother's shadow. Oh, but your mother has a legacy. It's, it is definitely there. But at the same time, it's also kind of like, 
you know, it's you could kind of ignore it or just kind of fast forward and you wouldn't miss much. <laughs> but it is it was still a good watch. And if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. I never in my life would think that I would say I was I would watch an anime about badminton, let alone badminton period. But I watched all twelve episodes and I did enjoy it. And you know, I hope that they make a second season because it was one of those things where it's all like, I will I won't spoil it, but let's just say they did leave it. They did leave it open for for further. And I would I don't know which character that they would follow because one of the characters stayed in high school and the other one went to college. So the, again, that was also some of the drama. It's all like, will she leave high school? You know, settling the score with her rival, or will it just end? So you know, that was kind of a a, a plot line too. They could um, also just do a spinoff for one of them. True, yeah, they could always just follow one, and then the other character will just do like cameos or whatnot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know, and I think it's still going too. The anime or the manga is still going, so. So they have plenty of material. They absolutely do. Okay. Um, and and actually, now that we're talking about it more, I'm actually a double liar too. Going even further back, I did watch another sports anime, Keijo. How can we forget Keijo? Is that the butt one? The butt one. Okay. It's a sports <laughs> anime. But yeah, it's it's absolutely a sports anime, and it's and it's like yeah, but Keijo saved anime, so you know, <laughs> Keijo, Keijo knew what it was wholeheartedly, and the fact that people still tried to go out of their way to make like shame people for watching and liking Keijo, but then like it, it kind of felt like everyone stood up united as one giant collective weeb weeaboo and said no. Shut up. This is anime. You know, this is literally anime. It's ridiculous. It doesn't need to make sense. It doesn't need to make you cry or laugh or any of that. It can just be ridiculous and fun. And everybody stood up as one and said, fuck off. And that is what, for one moment in time, every weeb was united in saying Keijo was fun. And that's that's not something you see very often. You just don't you don't see that. And and I mean like all all ages, all races, all genders, all all countries, languages, everyone. Like they they shared an article where it was these Brazilian ladies, and they're actually trying to make a real life Cajo league oh. in Brazil. So it's it was just global. It was it was all over the place. We had some Japanese cosplayers were cosplaying Keijo. Absolutely fantastic, and um, you don't you just don't see that. You just don't see that kind of unity, uh, you know, in, in the anime community these days. But like I said, for for one moment in time, we we came together for Keijo, and yeah, it was it was great. But then apparently the. Um, the manga didn't, or the anime didn't help manga sales, so they shut it down. Really? Yeah. They they ended the manga. Yeah. The uh, the producer or the manga producer came to the producer, the the guy that does Keijo, and they said, "Well, the anime is not helping sales, so shut it all down." And so I don't even know if he finished it or if he wrapped it up. I think he wrapped it up because he had like you know he wanted to keep going further, but they said you know finish it in like two volumes, and so poor guy had to just end it. And what's sad is that it actually, I think, may have been more popular in America than it was in, like, anywhere else. So it's almost like he should have, they, they should have just marketed it to America. Yeah. They should have just been like, you know what, we're not even going to put it in Japanese bookstores. We're just going to put it in Barnes and & Nobles and Amazon and at, at anime conventions and Viz Media or whatever, whoever's still around. Uh, they can just sell the manga. Uh, and there we go, Joe will live forever. Yeah. But, Alas, they they didn't see things like that. But yeah, that was that. Uh, going back to the subject, that was the other sports anime that I watched. Okay, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Go watch Keijo. Yeah, I, I I need to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. Um, see, the next thing I got on here, and I only got this on here because we were talking about it a few episodes ago. Okay. Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy has a season two coming out for their anime. Oh, nice. Um. I did not give a date, so I don't know when it's actually coming out. But they do have a season two, and I should probably watch season one because I was kind of interested in checking it out. Um, it's, you know, a lot of the characters look pretty cool, so I'll probably check that out. Um, so Grand Blue is—I want to say it was at least a web browser game yep. before it moved to like cell phones, and it's the. 
It, well, the artist, he was the guy that did all the character designs of Final Fantasy Tactics back in 97. Oh, okay. And that was him. And then, I don't know what he did in between, but then they, he came back and he did uh, Near Automata. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I when you see, and it's, it's kind of funny because it, it always stuck out to me in Tactics, about Final Fantasy Tactics, is uh, they had no noses. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of like, but it was it was really good like fantasy styles, and I mean you know I don't think it, you it's hard to find anyone that ever didn't like Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, I, it's I, pretty universally liked. Yeah, I, I I do like it, but I I felt that the games were always too easy, and that's probably because I played them to death. I just played them so much, <laughs> and because you can do unlimited grinding in the game, you can just op your characters in just a couple of chapters. So, I and I always did, and I know people are like, well, then just don't level up your characters. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. I can't. But, you know, it, it was fun. The system was fun. The character designs, again, were good. Um, if it wasn't for the character Agrius, we wouldn't have Saber. Same fucking character. So I could, Changed my mind. I could thank them for bringing one of the best characters to anime. Yes, they, yes. <laughs> Titan Moon ripped off Agrius from Final Fantasy Tactics and gave you Artorias Saber. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, so yeah, but then they brought him back, and he did all the character designs for Grand Blue Fantasy. And uh, unlike games like Kantai Collection or FGO um, or other ones where they kind of like they they have different artists do different characters, and Grand Blue Fantasy, it's all him. It's all one one dude, and I forget his name, of course, but it's it's him. He's doing all of them. Um, but the characters, and I don't know exactly how the game is structured. Because like when you do fake Grand Order in FGO, it's done kind of like in those chapters, how you get a chapter and then there's stages, and but every stage has a story and it right. flows. You know, then you do chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I don't know how they do the storytelling in Grand Blue Fantasy. I know that there is some semblance of a story, yeah, but I think that it's all based on individual character. Like you roll a character and then you get that character's individual story. I'm not sure. I played a little bit. I played okay. the very beginning. Okay. Uh, and then I had to move, and I haven't picked it up again. Got it. <laughs> right. I, I did. So I did see the anime because Grand Blue Fantasy is also the greatest, the best Final Fantasy game you've never played. And um, it was, but I believe the anime was its own self-contained story. Okay. And you did meet characters from the game, but really the last like two episodes was like when they just threw in everybody. They just started throwing in characters and they didn't even care anymore. They were just like, okay, we've been kind of putting in a character one or two or here, but at the end they just threw in like seven, eight characters in there and they were just trying to try cram them all in there. Um, They're like, oh man, people actually wanted to see these guys. You're right, like me. <laughs> and um, they did an OVA, which was funny because they uh, replaced the character Gron with the female character Digita. Right. So it was kind of like, but they also did it kind of seamlessly where it was almost oh, like they never changed characters like they're the same character it's just you know boy or girl basically right. but I thought that, that was kind of funny <laughs> um, so they were just kind of like remember that time we did that and you're just like wait no she wasn't there but again it's just the the character avatar it right. is the same character right. it's just the avatar is different that's all um, and I'm hoping <laughs> that uh, when we, we'll, we'll talk about this later too but I'm hoping that that's kind of what they do I hope with the uh, FGO Babylonia anime, ah. is that they kind of swap between Gudao and Gudako because I believe that that's what they did with the stage play. Oh, right. They just kind of inter interchanged between like you know male characters on this scene, but then the female characters in this scene. But it's not meant to be two separate characters. It's the same character. It's just different avatar. Okay. So I'm hoping that that's what they do uh, in FGO the anime. But going back to Grand Blue Fantasy. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good, and if anything, it served as a giant plug for the game. Okay. And they crafted a really interesting world, and they actually had some of the, the summon spirits and all that were, like, literally ripped right from Final Fantasy. Like, Leviathan is a giant water serpent. Okay. Yeah. You know, and then, like, Gaia is a giant, like, like Earth serpent and stuff like that. And I, th I want to even say, like, Carbuncle was in there. So, okay. uh, it was really, like... A bunch of elements from, and then of course the character designer from Tactics, you know. Yeah. So they ripped off a bunch of things from Final Fantasy. So it's some of the best elements of Final Fantasy, minus the you know kind of genericness. Right. Um. 
So it it's got a lot of good elements to it. So I, I if you're saying there's a season two coming, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely a season two, and uh, there's the PS4 game coming out too. Oh yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, so that's uh, what was it? well, there's the the PS4 game which was by Psy Games, and they brought in Platinum Games to do like the engine. Right. So the guys that did do Bayonetta, Near Automata, they brought them in, and then there was kind of some controversy because. Uh, they just released a statement about a month or so ago where they were just, they were like done. They were like, Psy Games just wished Platinum Games well and Platinum Games just left. So everyone wasn't sure if that was because they were fired or if they just finished their work. Because it wasn't like with Nier where Square brought in Platinum Games to do the whole game and then Square just published it. For this one, they brought Platinum in, it sounds like, just to do, like, the engine. Right. But they didn't write the story. They didn't do character designs, nothing. They just said, you know, program our game. Right. And then I guess they completed it. I'm taking it that they completed their work, they finished their contract, and then they they were gone. That's it. You know, thank you so much. Have a nice day. Okay. That's, that's how contracts work. Yeah. But, you know... We live in this day and age where conspiracy theories are everywhere. So, yeah. Some people are like, oh, did they get fired? And it's like, guys, name a time or a precedent when Platinum Games has ever done a shitty job and they got fired. For fuck's sake, man. They did Transformers <laughs> and they did the Legend of Korra game. Oh, okay. And they didn't get fired from either of those. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> Platinum Games doesn't sound, they're not the types of guys that go in and like half ass it and then just have this bad, terrible reputation for making crappy games and get fired. So, you know, that's ninja theory. Oh! But anywho. Um, yeah. It, it, so, yeah. Um, and they did say that that is getting an international release. Oh, so, yeah. it okay. sounds like the PS4 game is going to be their attempt to pierce, like, outside of Japan in the market. Okay. I mean, to be fair, probably they probably started with the anime. They threw the anime on Crunchyroll to see if people were interested and it yeah. sounded like people were kind of into it I, I do hear people do talk about it i know a guy personally that he plays grand blue more than fgo okay. and he kind of does fgo maybe to do his logins maybe burn his ap but you know that's once a day at best yeah but he's really head deep into grand blue fantasy and he's always trying to like brainwash me into playing it <laughs> and it's it's kind of sad because i love some of the characters like ilsa for instance okay um <laughs> so it's kind of like and I did buy like the uh, the Luria Luria. I bought her Nendo. Oh, nice. and she came with Verm. And I do like Catalina, who is voiced by Miyuki Sawashiro. So um, yeah, they they actually showed Catalina in the PS4 Grand Blue Fantasy game. So she's like a super big character, and I think she's also like that. She was like that in the anime, I believe. She's like that in the game itself too. So. Um, yeah, it, it, and then of course, obviously the the actual fighting game coming out from Arc System Works. Yeah, so you know we're, we're going to get a whole Grand Blue Fantasy onslaught, and um, you know Psy Games they got the money. Yeah, they definitely got because I heard it has like an even worse drop rate than uh, FGO. Wow, and FGO is already kind of like you know two steps away from pulling the trigger, but. <laughs> um, you know they've they've definitely got big, and they 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 sponsor um, Daigo Umehara Daigo too. Oh so. yeah, nice. So yeah, Psy Games got money. So uh, you know, and on top of that, with uh, the FGO news that we'll talk about later, and how much FGO made, I don't blame like Psy Games or who was the other one, Bushi Road. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing them fucking everywhere. Like they're like, yo, Americans are spending how much on Gotcha? Out of here, Japan. We're going to America, and you start just seeing them everywhere, everywhere. Like every con, I think, comic book shops. I think Bushi Road already does cons. Yeah, like they already go there and promote the game. When and, I went uh, to go see New Japan at the Cow Palace in San yeah, Francisco, they were a sponsor. yeah, they were a sponsor for that. Yep, I remember seeing the commercials with your Kenny Omega, Kenny Omega, and Bang Dream. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Bushi Road's already on their way over here. Mm -hmm. Like they've been working it for a while. Yeah, uh, because I've seen pictures of them at conventions. Like they had a they had a kind of an FGO kind of tour with the the Bang Dream game going nice. around. Nice. Uh, so yeah, they're doing they're yeah. doing the same thing. It's coming, man. I have a feeling it's only going to get worse. Yeah, so, yeah. Which uh, which is kind of sad because I don't want that to be the death of console games. But who knows, man? <laughs> it might be where we're heading. Like, I wanted to buy the new system, but I spent all my money on the gotcha for FGO. Yeah. Look at my, <laughs> my level one wife. <laughs> oh, man. 
But yeah, no. I, it, Grand Blue Fantasy, I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. That sounds fun. All right. Uh, next thing I got, um, there's going to be a new Wotakoi uh, anime episode that's Ooh. going to be released with the Volume 7 uh, manga uh, issue. Interesting. Um, and it's it's focusing on their high school days. Hmm. So it's going to be them in high school. <laughs> so, funny enough, speaking of Miyuki Sawashiro, so, God, I, I forgot all of their names because it's been already like a year. Yeah. But the what's-her-name and what's-his-face, the, the green-haired <laughs> dude, or the, the orange-haired dude and the classes one, I just know she's voiced by Miyuki Sawashiro. So, well, the dude is voiced by Sukita. Yeah. And she is voiced by Miyuki Sawashiro. And they had such good chemistry that I was all like, can we make voice actors marry each other? Like, for one second. They, they were so good. And it was, like, earlier in the year when uh, Sugita was with Aoyuki in Aho Girl. I was all like, okay, can Aoyuki and Sugita get married and then just make beautiful voice acting children? Was he Akun? Yes, okay. he was Akun. Okay. And, um, <laughs> but then Wotakoi happened. I was like, okay, forget Aoyuki. Marries Miyuki Sawashino instead. And Miyuki Sawashino, you know, I love her to death. All the respect in the world. And she's such a Fujoshi. And I was just, like, pulling my hair. Like, oh, why? <laughs> but I, that's just, that's more power to her, you know? She's she's making a convincing Fujoshi. <laughs> In the show, because she is one. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Mean, makes it more authentic. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and, and, um, and you know that they're doing live action as well. Oh, are they? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, World of Koi is coming up in the world. We need a second season. Yeah. We'll definitely need one of those. Maybe if the... Uh... Maybe if that uh, live action does well, they'll, yeah. they'll say, let's do a second season of the anime. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, if, if you don't watch that opening to Wotakoi and just not start doing the little hand motions, <laughs> then you're probably dead inside. Even I, And I'm pretty dead inside. And even I was just like, all right, that's, that's Kawhi. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was a good series. I think that that was the, the heartwarming series that everyone needed. So And, you know, it, it, it does have a lot of tropes. That if yep. you know you're an anime fan or video game fan, you're just kind of like holding your face in your hands, like you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so. I like, I like that they played a lot of Smash. <laughs> I mean, they didn't. Did they come out and say it was Smash? Mm-hmm. But you knew it was Smash. It was Smash. Uh, and Monster Hunter. And Monster Hunter. That oh yeah, they kept showing that game. Yeah. It's like all right. Well, I know we're sponsoring this. Yeah. <laughs> it's Capcom. Yeah. <laughs> and what's also funny too is. The uh, the two main characters, you know, they're kind of like uh, like more not necessarily rookie but lesser known voice actors, and then they're being supported by Sukita and Sawashiro. Yeah, and so it's kind of like you know they're the main characters, but in the background, you know, they're kind of being pushed from behind by these two veteran voice actors. Mm-hmm. So I thought that that was kind of a, a nice little touch too, you know, that you're getting the the bump basically from two veterans, cool. and you know the two rookies, the two new ones, the main characters were definitely holding their own too. So, um, I have a, I, I had some friends of mine actually did a Wotakoi cosplay, and there was a and at Sack Anime in January. There was a Wotakoi cosplayer as well too. So it's pretty good. Nice. And uh, the the guy that was the main character, the the main dude, you know, he actually sold it too. Like he really, when he took his picture, he looked like he didn't want to be there. <laughs> so you know, it was really, really, really well done. So uh, it, it's a show that you would be totally caught off guard, and you'd be like, "I never watched that." But then you watch, and you're like, "I'm gonna keep watching this." <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's a fun show. Yeah, and we do need a second season. Yes, uh, I only got a few others on here. Uh, next one, there was I brought this up earlier that there's a third season of Psycho Pass coming out. Okay, um, I know that Bell and I still need to finish season two of Psycho Pass. Uh, and uh, we were talking about doing that eventually, uh, since we do have a little more time. Because before, when I was in the other house, mm-hmm. she would record and then leave. Mm-hmm. But now that she comes up here, she just stays the night. So there's no point in her leaving, because it's another hour and a half to get back there. Okay. So we might potentially pick up some of the other shows that we started watching before. Nice. Because uh, we had Code Geass, we had... Uh, second season to School Rumble, we had Nichi Joe, we had Psycho Pass, uh, and I think there was a couple others that I can't... Oh, they... No, can't remember. Uh, but yeah, we, we will 
potentially finish season two, and then hopefully we'll start season three whenever that comes out. So you guys heard it. React videos are coming. Be ready. The only thing I did notice is they did have a uh, like a visual um, like art piece for it. Okay. And it does not look like it's following the main girl. Interesting. From season one and two. It looks like two completely different characters, both male. So I, I have no no knowledge at all about psychopaths, so maybe I'll just watch your video <laughs> and get caught up. <laughs> so it's uh, I'll get educated. I think it's kind of like a mix between um, Equilibrium okay. a little bit, and what is that one one movie with uh, Tom Cruise where they would stop your crimes before? Oh, they Minority end? Report. It's like a mix of those two. Okay, um, but. Better. <laughs> Got it. And if you guys haven't seen Equilibrium, it has Batman, Christian Bale, and it's Gun Kata. Yes. Go watch it. It's actually it's the the greatest straight DVD movie you've never seen. Yeah, I'd never even heard of it till I saw it. Like so we were watching it, and I was in the military. Yeah. And I was like, "What movie is this? <laughs> this is awesome." It, you should check it out. It's yes. pretty. It's pretty good. Yes. Go watch Equilibrium, then go watch Psychopaths, and then watch Roman's video on Psychopaths. Yes. Uh, next one. The author to Hajime no Ippo has stated that he is about halfway done with the story. Jeez. And that is up to, like, almost 1,400 chapters. 30-something. It's been going on since 88, people. I was just about to say, when did it start? <laughs> it's been going on since 1988. Uh, oh, nice. However, he did also state that he was not going to spend another 30 years to tell the rest of his story. Because <laughs> that would be way too much and he'd probably be dead before then. <laughs> I don't know how old the guy is, but with the way these manga artists and people are dropping. <sighs> to put it in perspective, in 88, I was, what, four years old? Me too. Four yeah, years so old. So we're the same, yeah, yeah. The same age. Uh, that's basically all I got for that. I know I really like Hajime no Ippo. I got to pick it up again. Are they going to ever animate more of it? Uh, I haven't heard anything about it yet. There's still, there's definitely plenty of material they can go through. <laughs> Did you ever see the homemade like fighting game they were doing for Hajime no Ippo? No. It was it was a two D like almost Street Fighter esque. It was like one guy or maybe a, a small group of guys that were actually making it. I saw it about three years ago, so it was a while ago now. But it was kind of and they only had like two or three characters. Yeah. And you know because they've made Hajime no Ippo. Yeah, they made games. It was games it's Virtuous Boxer or whatever, Victorious Boxer. Yeah, Victorious yeah. Boxer, which is what they call it in America. But these guys weren't doing like the three D one. No, they were doing like a two D Street Fighter style. Yeah, and it it actually looked pretty intriguing. Hmm. I'll have to give it to you so you can maybe post it on the on Facebook. Yeah, or I'll post it on Facebook. But yeah, I'll make a note to get you that. Okay. Uh, this one is kind of an old uh, old old news that like came out in January. Okay, but. I did not hear anybody talk about it, and I think she deserves to have uh, it brought up again. Okay. Uh, Rumiko Takahashi, okay. the uh, author, for those of you who don't know, who did Inuyasha, Rama Half, Yurisei Yatsura, and so on, uh, won a award in France for Best Comic. Uh, I cannot pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> but uh, there have only been two other Japanese winners for this award for manga. And they were Akira Toriyama and Katsuhiro Otomo. So the author of Dragon Ball and Akira. So nice. they were the only other two winners of this award. And now um, Rumiko Takahashi can add her name to that list. And what's the award celebrate? Um, it says it's the Grand Prix Comics Award. Interesting. So it's, it's a, like a, a high honor, I guess, in France to win this award if you're doing comics. Interesting. It's like one of their top awards for comic artists. And so are they awarding her for something she's doing right now or just because of her history? Maybe because of her history. Okay. I but, mean, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from her. That's fantastic and she definitely deserves it. Yeah. But I was just wondering, is like, she doing anything these days? Uh, I don't know. I know there's a couple of shows. Uh, like there was an anime that came out a couple seasons ago that was from her okay. library. I cannot remember the name of it. It kind of reminded me of Inuyasha, though. Got it. <laughs> uh... 
so it, it's it's good because so one of my favorite Rumiko Takahashi stories, and I don't know if I've ever said this on the podcast, is that she actually used she is BFFs with Kamiya Akira, the voice of Kenshiro. Yes, yes. And I just I love that story to death because it just shows you that there's this like anime like Illuminati, and you know they they're they're in cahoots with each other. And it's absolutely fantastic. That's why he was in Urusei Yatsura, and I think he was in Mason Nukoku as well. And they wanted him to be uh, Kuno and Ranma, but when they were doing Ranma, they were like, no, we don't want to, he's an established voice actor, you know? He was uh, Rick Hunter in Macross. I don't know his Japanese name. But, <laughs> you know, he was Kenshiro. He was um, the, in, uh, in uh, God, Gachaman, the, the, you know, the Eagles. The lead? The lead? What's your name? Was he the lead? Yeah, he was the lead. He okay. was the lead in the Eagles. So, you know, he, he was Ken Shido. He was the lead in Gatchaman. He was the lead in Macross. He was just fucking everywhere. And he is he is the greatest of all time. Kiniku Man from uh, Ultimate Muscle. He was Kiniku oh, Man. Okay. And all the way up to the one that we got here in America, the one that Four Kids was dubbing. Yeah, yeah. That was the only time he wasn't Kiniku Man. Wow. So of course it's gonna be the one that we get here in America. Yeah. So, but yeah, he was he was Kaniku man. So that right there, you say Fist of the North Star, Macross, Gatchaman, and uh, Kaniku man. That right there means you're established. But he's kind of like Megumi Hayashibara. Megumi Hayashibara is still doing uh, Jesse from Pokemon Musashi oh, okay. from Team Rocket. Yeah. So she's still doing that, and uh, Aki uh, or Akira Kamiya is still doing the lead detective guy from Detective Conan. The guy who's kind of an idiot. Yeah. He that's him. Okay. That's Kenshiro. Um, and for like one of the anniversaries, I think it was, and like or some variety show or something, in like two thousand and eight, they brought him back so he can still do the And it was so funny because they were like, here they just put him in a booth and they were like, yo, can you still do it? And he did <laughs> And he did it for almost like a minute straight. And it's all like, yo, he still got it, man. So, you know, you know, some people are just like, oh, man, you know, like musicians. They're like, oh, I don't want to sing that song that made me famous. Like, um, like Led Zeppelin. They don't want to sing Star- Stay Away to Heaven. But he's just all like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? I'll probably blow my voice out. But hey, whatever. You know, I'm Ken Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, it was it was kind of gnarly to see that he still does it, but you know, he's obviously he's he's still voice acting. But um, going back to Rumiko Takahashi, they didn't put him in Ranma because they wanted to do new characters, and then they were thinking about putting him in Inuyasha. But by the time Inuyasha was coming about, he was too expensive, hmm. so they didn't put yeah. him in there. But again, Rumiko Takahashi is always trying to throw a bone to her boy. So you know, I just I love I love that they're just basically. Just homies in the same crowd. Yeah. I think my first introduction to him would be Yurose Atsura. Yurose Atsura? Yeah. yeah. There was that, that Kenshiro yeah, was cameo. A... Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was, what was his name in that? They didn't call him Kenshiro. I know they called him something else. No, yeah, they called him something else. But that was... <laughs> he gets beat up by that big cat. But, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I never made it that far into the series, but I saw that clip. Yeah. Like, I got up to 130-something episodes before I lost all my episodes. I've yeah. since downloaded all of them. So, man, if I could find the DVDs or Blu-rays again, I don't think they've ever re-released them. Yeah. I am definitely buying them all. I don't care. <laughs> I will spend three hundred bucks to have that entire series. Is Lum your OG waifu? She is. Yes, okay. Lum. If if you ask me, like, pick one waifu out of all of them, yeah. Lum is my waifu. Okay. And everybody else don't matter. <laughs> Lum is Lum is the one. All right. So yeah. Okay. Rumiko Takahashi, congratulations. Yes. Uh, and finally, this one might be kind of quick. Like I was saying earlier, Dragon Ball Super is rumored, but it's a pretty good rumor, that it's coming back in July of this year. Not next year, this year. So, to guess the Dragon Ball Brawly movie did well enough to where they said, let's do more. <laughs> yeah. We were kind of talking about this off air, but we'll just throw it out there now. And it's kind of like there's a bunch of other Dragon Ball news coming about too. Yeah. So because they also announced um, as of this recording on March 17th that uh, Goku from GT, the chibi small Goku, is going to Dragon Ball Z Fighters. Yep, child Goku. Child Goku from that. So I was kind of thinking that that's going to open the floodgates, and I wouldn't be surprised if you got was the SS4. Where he looks kind of half monkey from GT. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming down in the next couple of months or so. 
if they haven't already announced it, and some DBZ guy's going to correct me in the comments. Right. So they already announced them yesterday, last night. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. And it's kind of like, it's becoming the, was it the Tenkaichi Budokai? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be like, the roster's going to be 48 characters. So, but I mean, to be fair though, Ar- Arxis is pretty good on making everyone play, like, unique. So it's not like anyone's just a straight palette swap. Right. You're not getting, like, Ryu, Ken, Dan, Sakura, Akuma. It's not like that. Like, everyone has their own gimmick. So they're pretty good at keeping everyone different. So, I mean, if they can make Yamcha viable, yeah. Arc System works to pretty much do anything. Yeah, I saw a bunch of videos where people were like, he's super good. Yeah. And I was like, well, Yamcha? Yeah. Well, I guess that makes up for all the... <laughs> I, I want to say that <laughs> at Top flash. 8 Evo, Yamcha was in, like, Top 8. Yamcha was in top eight. Yeah, one of the guys was using Yamcha in top eight. Okay. So, yeah, don't I mean, he don't. He looked pretty in, intense yeah. when he plays him. I saw yeah. videos again. Don't sleep on Yamcha and DBZ fighters. I'm not even a DBZ fan, and even I'm telling you, don't sleep on Yamcha. So, yeah, don't sleep on him. <laughs> don't sleep on Yamcha. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, and then, of course, we were still also kind of casually talking about how much money that Dragon Ball made in the theaters. Yeah. Was it 35? 30 mil. 30 mil. For the U.S. For U.S. alone. Yeah. And how that's pretty much going to open the floodgates for uh, a bunch of other, like, theatrical releases and whatnot. And, you know, we were kind of touching up. We just talked about a little bit about the mobile game companies all, you know, about to come in. Like, because they see the success of FGO yeah. and Grand Blue Fantasy and, and games like uh, Bang Dream and then Bushi Road and all that. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more, like, DBZ things. Didn't they actually say... A movie, the next movie is coming out now in theaters or something? Uh, for <coughs> Dragon Ball. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they've announced another movie yet. Okay. The, the, yeah, I, don't, I haven't heard anything about another movie. Okay. Um, I'm just so, getting ahead of myself. Though. Yeah, just ahead of yourself. But I, with the way the other three movies did in theaters, I would not doubt that they brought the next one in theaters as well. Cool. So I guess if you're a DBZ fan, you're, it's a good time. Yep. So you got a lot to look forward to. It's not going to end anytime soon. Yeah. Either you're going to get a series or you're going to get a movie. Yeah. Either way, you're, you're going to get something. And as long as Akira Toriyama keeps saying this is a part of my actual story, then it's all canon. <laughs> like the Brawley movie, thank God. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was basically all the news I had. Uh, the next part I could talk about after we're done, because that, that's just going to be really quick. Okay. So we can move on to video games. So we're going into video games? Yep, video All right. games. Alright, so I'm going to start with Devil May Cry because it's going to be fast. I haven't played it yet. <laughs> so, um, I actually, so something happened. The game was supposed to have been out, did, not this past Friday, but two weeks ago. The game came out, officially for everybody. Right. I had gotten the super deluxe $150 version, the one that came with the little model van from Devil May Cry. The one that Nico dro- drove in the preview video. And so, me and others, we were all super excited. Friday rolled around. Let's back up a little bit. Wednesday rolled around. No one that had it through Amazon like we did, we got char- We didn't get charged for it. So, my friend was messaging me like, should I worry yet? And I told her, not yet. Because I said the week before, when I got Dead or Alive 6, they didn't charge me until almost like 2 a.m. Friday morning. And then it showed up on my doorstep. Wow. So, on, on Friday. So, I said, let's not wait yet. Wednesday passed, Thursday happened, nothing. Friday happened, and it was like, nothing. Dead silence. Didn't get charged, didn't get an update. People were playing the game. People had actually been playing the game almost since, like, Tuesday. Yeah. People were like, you know, they broke street date. You know, you got your homie at GameStop, slides you the copy, you know. And there are people are all going crazy. If you haven't seen Dante's Michael Jackson reenactment... You can't you can't erase MJ. You can take him out of the Simpsons. You can't take him out of Devil May Cry Five. <laughs> Anywho, awful Michael Jackson. Anywho, but yes, um, yeah, we were like tripping. We were like, what happened? There was no charge, no movement, and then we got emails saying that we won't get our copies of the special Uber Deluxe Edition until April, and so then it was like, what the. So my friend, she immediately gets on the phone with Amazon, customer service, and the, whoever was the customer service rep is just giving her the runaround, and they're like, yeah, we don't have it. Our pre-order guarantee means you get it between now and April. We have that right, and that's what it means with the pre-order guarantee. 
And my friends just are like, you know, well, what what happened? What's going on? And she's like, well, you know, you're you're guaranteed your game by April. And they're just she's just saying the same thing. This customer service rep is telling my friend the same thing. And she eventually the customer service rep is just like, well, you know what? Do you want me to just cancel it? I can just cancel it for you. Do you want me to just cancel it? And I was all like, wow. Wow. I mean, and, and no one knows. No one knows what happened. No one knows if Capcom didn't send them. If they got stolen at the dock, we don't know what happened. We just know that we had it pre-ordered. We were waiting for it. Apparently, a handful of people on like Reddit claimed they got theirs on the day of. And I had mine pre-ordered back in December. Yeah. And so now this is March. And I was being told April. And so it's like, I, I don't know. And, you know, this person is just telling my friend, oh, we'll just we'll just cancel it for you and that'll be the end of it. And it's not like, I don't want it to be canceled. I want to know where's my game. And, you know, it was just like, wow, it was a losing fight. And we just were left with nothing. And so then I was like, all right, whatever. Then it's in April it will be. Then I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to play more FGO. And Fate is coming out on PS4, which we'll talk about. Yep. And I was like, I'm not going to sweat it then. I'll just wait for April to play Devil May Cry. Then this past Tuesday, I got an email saying, oh, yeah, your game will be there by Friday. Or by Thursday. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and so it was like, what? And so then, yeah, they, they, they updated the email. They didn't say nothing. And then on Wednesday, they charged me. And on Thursday, I actually had it. And Thursday was the night that I was going to go see Fate Stay Night Heaven's Field Part 2, which we'll also discuss. Yeah. And I was all like, well, shit, I don't want to go watch Heaven's Field anymore. I want to play Devil May Cry. Because when it comes to fate versus Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry is going to win every day, all day. I'm sorry. Dante would destroy Saber. Quote me on that. Well, I was just about to say, only one of them has Dante. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but both of them have Nero. Oh! Oh. Well, only one is good, so. It's true. You're not wrong. So, That's um, Devil May Cry. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah um, because of that because it came out on Thursday and I've just been running around ever since then I just haven't had the time or the energy to sit down and, and play it and I know I feel like I betrayed myself because all my hype and all my enthusiasm but it was kind of like oh man I, I want to when I sit down and finally play it I just want to just take it all in and just in, enjoy it and embrace it and be on cry because I missed you, Dante. Welcome back. <laughs> um, so I will I will make a commitment that in the next podcast I will go more into detail about Devil May Cry. But I felt that you guys should uh, at least know that that happens. And uh, if you pre-order things, I know some people are actually very adamant against pre-ordering. Even even <laughs> I know I should learn my lesson about pre-ordering through things like that. But I'm still. Just watch your pre-orders, watch your bank accounts, watch your charge statements, and call call these people. If you don't get any information, call them, press them for information, and maybe see. I don't know. See, maybe if you can get some some gift cards or something. Because I told my friend to get a gift card. Yeah, I was all like, you should be telling them that. Oh, I took time off to play this game. Like I took the weekend off to play this game, and I don't know what's going on. But now, pretty much everything is shot. My experience is shot. You know, can I get something for it? You know, I was all like, you never know until you try. No, so, the, from the way that Amazon customer service rep sounded, they probably would have said like, no. No. Yeah. You don't get nothing. Yeah, nothing. That was your fault. Yeah. You shouldn't have took time off. Pretty much. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, because it, it just, I, I came up with that idea because I remember people were saying that that's what they did with Kingdom Hearts. Oh, Where they took like the week or the weekend off just to play Kingdom Hearts. And I was like, what? So I was all like, yeah, I'm going to take the day off just to play Devil May Cry. I don't need a weekend or a week. I just need a day. Not that long. But yeah, um, I will I will go and actually get some hands-on quality time with it and report back. Um, but but yeah, um, I do. I did, like I said, wanted to talk about Fate X Stella, but I'll save that till the end. I'm gonna save that till the end because there's a huge block of fate stuff, of course. Yeah. That we'll we'll talk about, and I'll throw Fate Extella in at that point. Um, I did want to mention that uh, NorCal Regionals here in, in California is going down on the 29th, and so I mean I'll be there because it's going to be held in San Jose, which is also the home of Fanime for us. Yep. Here in the Nor NorCal in the Bay Area, at least that's one of our our bigger conventions, and it's going to be held at the San Jose Convention Center. Uh, I believe. NCR is still a stop on the Capcom Pro Tour. So whoever wins basically gets 
a spot at Evo, I believe. I believe that's still into play. If not, they get a, a boat ton of points. Okay. And the points is how they rank. So it's all like, you know, people that win the, the stops, they get to go to, to I'm sorry, not to Evo. Um, they get to go to Capcom Pro Tour at okay. the end. Capcom World Cup at the end. Okay. Uh, so whoever wins NCR gets to go there. Um, and yeah, I haven't been to NCR in about three years now. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, it should be some good. I was watching a little bit of Final Round right. yesterday, and Final Round, I believe, is in Georgia. I think that's in Atlanta. Okay. And um, it, it was looking pretty pretty spot on. Um, I saw, like, MOV was there, uh, and I heard Daigo was also running around. I saw Yipes on the mic. So, you know, it was uh, it was pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to doing some FGC events, because all I've been doing as of late is Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch <laughs> League. So, you know, I, I've... I really should get back into my fighting game roots, so uh, I'm looking forward to NCR. And NCR also did remind me um, that Maximilian just celebrated 1 million subscribers oh. on YouTube. Congrats. And yeah, absolutely. I wanted to, you know, I kind of wrote a little post on, on Facebook, not like he's ever going to wa- read it or watch it, but... Um, <laughs> I, I have all the respect in the world for people like Max and James, the angry video game nerd, oh, because James Rolfe, James Rolf, yes. Yeah. I, I feel that without them doing what they did, making their videos, streaming, I think that they're, they're the pioneers of, of all of this. That's why guys like Roman and I can go and, and get on this podcast now and just talk about our, our ideas and our feelings, yep. because they were out there doing it like every day, you know? <laughs> You know, obviously James, a little bit on the vulgar side and all that, but personally, I actually felt connected to James because I felt that we shared a lot of, like, experiences, like, playing video games as children and growing up and whatnot, and when James would talk about the weekend coming and doing homework and then renting a video game, and as an adult, he goes back and plays all these video games that he only had a weekend, more or less, to play, and he didn't always have the best of experiences, I was like... I know exactly where you're coming from, bro. I remember renting like Section Z, which was made by Capcom, oh, and, I like and that game. Double Dribble, and Jordan versus Bird, and Blades of Steel, you know, all these games, Guerrilla Warfare, which I finally saw was on uh, AGDQ this year, so I kind of freaked out a bit. <laughs> uh, Guerrilla Warfare was made by SNK, so okay. it's kind of like, you know. Um, <laughs> But, you know, all those games, Battletoads, oh god, Battletoads, Battletoads, Battletoads and Double Dragon, Battletoads and Battle Maniacs on the Super, Yoshi's Island, um, which became a meme now. I made a post about that, about how you guys are now memeing Yoshi's Island, which makes me think if you guys want to play Yoshi's Island, we should play Yoshi's Island. So, um, yeah, it was like all of those those experiences, I just kind of was like, yeah, and, you know, when, when James would actually review games too, like Lester the Unlikely, and I was like, I, I read Lester the Unlikely in Nintendo Power, man. It was it was in the issue with Mega Man X on the cover. And so, it was, or, yeah, I think, or maybe he had his own issue. I don't even remember. I'm getting my issues confused. But it was in Nintendo Power, and I was all like, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I was like, the game looked so cool, and Nintendo Power was amazing at selling crap. <laughs> like, Nintendo Power was really good at hyping up games. They were probably utter garbage, but you would read it in Nintendo Power, and the way they did their layouts, their spreads, and their, you know, all their talks and all that, it made yeah. it seem like it's so cool. And then you would, like, play the game, or now as an adult, you watch someone play it on YouTube, and you're like, this doesn't look that fun. <laughs> it doesn't look that good at all. <laughs> um, and so it's like, oh boy. But Nintendo Power was just really good, you know, because it was basically a giant market for marketing ad for uh, Nintendo. Yeah. So, you know, they didn't care if the game was ass. They just needed to sell it to you. Um, but, yeah, and then uh, Max. Max seems... He's kind of the opposite, but we kind of had similar uh, experiences playing fighting games. But Max, to my knowledge, was more of the arcade scene. Like, he grew up, like, almost like he was in Karate Kid, where they would go, like, Saturday nights and spend all their days at the arcades. Right. And I, you know, I always lived here in the East Bay of California. I didn't have too many arcades to go to. No. You know, we, we had, what was it, like, Livermore or something had, like, Camelot or whatever it was called. Yeah, I think that's still around. That's still um, around? I think there used to be an arcade in Bayfair. Yes, and Southland Mall. Yeah, but 
Yeah, and they had one in Southland. Yes. But then they shut the one in Bayfair down. I yes. don't know if the one in Southland is still there. I think they have a small one. Yeah, I think they have a small one still. So. I did hear, uh, and I know this from their website, that they were going to put a round one yes. in Southland. Yes. But I don't know if... How yes, far yes, that yes. Going. That used to be like way back when. That used to be where the old movie theater used to be. Yeah. That festival cinemas. Now it's going to become a round one. Okay. Because I saw that it was supposed to be built last year, yeah. and uh, I don't know when they're actually going to finish that. Yeah. I was super excited. Like, yeah. A round one. Yeah. Sweet bowling, claw games, arcades. You don't need to go to Concord or San Jose. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I was looking forward to that, and and. Yeah, and it was it was like that. It, you know, I didn't have too much experiences going to the arcades because, you know, again, I, I just didn't have one near me. And it's funny now because now I'm like a grown ass adult, and I'm just now trying to teach myself how to use a fight stick. Oh, because it's all like, and people and like pro players they'll complain about like like fight pads or, or just regular controllers, and I'm like, are you kidding me? And I just bust out the controller and I'm just like blah 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 blah. But then you put me in a fight stick and I'm ass. Yeah, I, I have I to teach myself how to use a fight stick, so I, I am a dirty pad player when it comes to Street Fighter and Tekken because that's how I grew up. I grew up playing Street Fighter on on you know Super and PlayStation, yeah, and you know now PlayStation Four and all that. So I grew up playing all my fighting games on consoles, but you know I still played the same games that like Max played and still had the fond memories: Capcom versus SNK two, Marvel versus Capcom, Rival Schools, Darkstalkers three, Vampire Savior. All of those, you know, Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, you know, it was, you you just, you kind of connect and you understand that that's where it all was. And so, you know, now you see these guys making it big and, you know, they get the, the donations and all that. But even if you removed all of the financial incentive from it, just hearing the stories makes me click and makes me not only respect the guys, but wants to know more. Like, that's why I keep coming back. Because right. I know what they're talking about. I know they're not full of shit. I know they're not lying. Because I was like, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, bro. I know exactly where you're coming from. So I, I'm I'm happy for him that he hit 1 million YouTube subscribers. And, you know, they were giving him mad props for everything he's done for the FGC. And I did mention that, that if it wasn't for his contributions, we wouldn't have Street Fighter V on ESPN or Overwatch on Disney. And I mean that because that's where we're at right now. Yeah. And and yes, giant like scruffy dudes at the bar are complaining that why is this video game shit here at my bar? I'm trying to drink my my beer and I'm watching video games. Suck it. <laughs> that's just the evolution, you know. And that's that's where we're at. So, yep. um, in I guess in closing, you know, props to him, and I, I wish him all the more continued success. Yeah. Good. Congratulations again on the one million. Hopefully we can get there soon, soon, like maybe a few years. We're still uh, we're still open to six K subs, okay? Six K subs. We're doing a giveaway. Yep, six four, six K. Uh, we are at how many subs right now? Uh, I think it's like forty three. Yeah, forty three. Nice, forty three hundred. So getting there. Yeah, got another uh, seventeen hundred to go. You guys can do it. I you believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> giveaway six thousand. Make it happen. Yep, it'll be worth your while. It will be. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up for me in video games, unless you have... Uh, well, okay. Uh, I thought, we, I remember last week, we were, or last time, we were going to talk about the FGO VR. Oh, yes! So are we doing the V, are we doing the, uh, the block now, the, the Fate block? Uh, I feel, well, okay, if we got a whole block for that, maybe we'll, we'll we have a whole that. block of that. <laughs> we'll, wait, we'll wait till that. Okay. Okay, I just got one thing to talk about. Which you got? Uh, and that's, you know, my bang dream. Girls Band Party events going on right now. Okay. Okay, right now we I'm, okay. This event right here has made me realize that I like one character way less than I like everybody else. Yep. <laughs> it's called What a Wonderful World event. All right. And it follows the band Pastel Palettes, the only idol band that's in the <laughs> game. Okay. Uh, if you don't know, it's the bright pink colored girl right there in the corner. That's the lead singer to Pastel Palettes. All right. Um, Interesting. They have a uh, like a fan meetup event coming up. Right, and one of the one of the characters, her name is Hina. Okay, she is basically a prodigy when it comes to anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you you put her in front of like, okay, a guitar. She'll learn it really quickly. Interesting. You, you, she'll she only needs to read sheet music once, and she rec remembers it right away. Huh. Um, she 
I guess, reads encyclopedias just to learn the new words. <laughs> uh, she is, I don't know what, what you would call her, just a prodigy. Top ten OP characters. Today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she's also at the point where she does not understand people at all. Oh. Uh, like, they're all weird. Compared, <laughs> like, she thinks they're all weird. She doesn't understand them. And uh, she says a few things to some of the other characters that come off as rude and mean right. even though she's not trying to be but uh yeah I've, I've realized after watching doing this event that she is my least favorite Oof. I do not like Hina that much uh she's still kind of fun to watch when she's like after her sister because <laughs> she loves her sister um but when she's with anybody else she's Kind of, I don't know the word, but not fun. <laughs> Sounds like she's very Hima Dede. I guess. What is that? Like kind of princessy. Uh, I don't know about that. Kind of. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really know what other trope or, or thing because it's kind of like better than everyone else. She well, okay. She doesn't come out and say she's better than everybody else, though. Mm. But she is. I'm going to say better than everybody else. <laughs> she just doesn't admit it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but this whole thing was basically her trying to figure out what people... Like, why people are even coming to this meetup. Got it. Like, why are fans even coming to talk to us? Why do they, why do they care? Why, you know... Like, because she doesn't understand why people would want to go and meet famous, like, musicians or mm. something. The best way somebody explained it to her was if... Your sister went to was at one of these things. Wouldn't you want to go talk to her? And she's like, "Okay, I understand now." <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Um, but oh my god, she's the basically all she came up with at the end was nobody's like me, and I like that. <laughs> I'm the only me there is. Not wrong. Yeah, and uh, I was like, okay, I don't know if that's a good thing though. You're kind of you're kind of out there. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm not saying I really hate Hina, but she's my least favorite. I still like her, though. Good. But she's my least favorite out of the whole franchise. And, of course, it's the idol. Yeah, it's one of the idols. <laughs> um, the other idols are cool, though. Aya's funny. I really like Aya. Um, but that ends in two days. Aw. Um, and then we go on to the event titled Let's Go Sunset Adventure. Which follows Afterglow. That would be your H.H. Chan. Oh, the one that looks like Hentai Haven. All right. Yeah. That's Interesting. Her band. Afterglow. I look forward to your, your review of this next podcast. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'll have to see what exactly is going on with that event because that starts in two days. Excellent. Um, and then after that, we get the first year anniversary event. Okay. Which apparently they pushed back because they, were, they had to do the Persona event and they had to mm. push that up. So they moved stuff around. Got it. And that one ended up getting pushed back a bit, so we had to wait, uh, I guess, till the end of the beginning of next month before we get that. Uh, I'm not sure if I asked this before or not, but um, are the events going concurrent in both USA and uh, Japan? They were for a while, until okay. recently. Okay. Uh, until recently, when they did the Persona, they mixed it up a bit. Okay. But before that, you could go onto like a page and see what was coming up, okay. and it would be correct. Okay. Um, I'm assuming they're going to get back into that, where you can just go on there and say, okay, this is the next event, and then that one, and that one. Because that's what FGO does. Yeah. yeah. But right now, it's kind of mixed up a bit. Got it. Um, but that's basically it for a girls' band party. Just that that event's ending in two days. Uh, if you want a Hina to four-star, go get it. <laughs> if you guys play Bang Dream, please post in the comments. Let Roman know what's your squad. What do you guys like? Who's your waifu? Yeah. What's your favorite song? What's your favorite band? Yeah. This is all important information we'd like to know. Yeah, and why is it Roselia? So <laughs> Apparently Roselia. <laughs> no. Uh, whether you guys watch it or not, I'm still talking about it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. That's absolutely fair. <laughs> but, yeah. So that was basically the only other video game thing I had. I was going to talk about the Overwatch thing, but, I mean, I think it would have made more sense if we watched the entire... Like league day, <laughs> and talked about just all of the matches. Fair, but we, next time we'll do. An, we can do Overwatch. Yeah, we can do Overwatch next time. I'm down. 
So we'll do that. We'll uh, we'll watch some Overwatch. Watch some Overwatch, and then we'll talk about what cool. matches, what happened in the matches. Yeah, and I think actually this ne- this upcoming weekend or Thursday, I think is the finals at least for the stage one finals. Yeah, because so, right. I think this was okay. finishing up the the normal yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stage one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Next week. Stay tuned, guys. Overwatch is coming. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I guess we'll get into our FGO. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you don't do fate, I will wish you well and thank you for hanging out. Okay. For the rest of you guys that are fate, uh, I'm gonna do this kind of rapid fire. Before we start, let me get a sword. I can do All a right. whole episode on Bang Dream. I swear to God. Yeah, we we, we just might we just might. All right, FGO peeps. Yes. Here we go. So like I said, I'm gonna keep this uh, pretty. Just bang, 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 dream. Um, so we can, <laughs> we can get in, get out, and get you guys on your way. Uh, let's start with VR real quick. Yes. Because uh, Roman and I did actually mess around with VR. Yeah. And uh, I had fun with it. I, I really wish that they, they do more. They have more characters. Uh, I was a little disappointed that the F- uh, FGO VR, the English, only has English voice acting. Because I wanted more Takahashi GA. But Japanese are... PlayStations are region free, so I just made a Japanese account, and then I just downloaded it because the game is free. Oh, that's cool. So you know, <laughs> hearing uh, hearing it in original Japanese with Maya Sakamoto as Da Vinci and Takashi Rie again as Mashu is pretty cool. Uh, and of course, Kawashima as Saber. Well, you know, Saber. You know, you know, Saber. What else can I say? Um, and it actually felt pretty intuitive. I you know, the events were kind of goofy. Which is funny because I, I can't really think of a whole reason why they did that. I'm like, maybe it was a visual novel. And it's like, anything outside of Carnival Phantasm, these things wouldn't make any sense or whatnot. But Which I still need to watch. <sighs> Killing me, Smalls. Oh. So anyway, oh man. So I've disappointed Steve. You have. You, <laughs> that, was, that was a disappointment and a kick in the balls all at once. Wow. Okay. Oh man. Okay. So I'll get right on that. Roman. Then, uh, Roman has homework. I'll add it into my next batch of episodes. You want? You should do a react on Carnival Phantasm. That's what you should do. Oh, I'm. That's what I'm going to do. Good. It's going to be a react. All right. There you go. Um, man. And so yeah. So VR. VR was cool. If you ever get the chance to check it out, absolutely do check it out. Uh, you do have to complete the Mashu events before you unlock the Artoria events. But once you unlock everything, then you get free con- camera control and, you know, you can kind of just mess around and all that. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if they have any interest in ever doing more characters because it sounds like they're more invested in making FGO Arcade turn a profit. Right. And so a free VR game that doesn't make them any money, I don't know if they're ever going to come back to it, which is kind of sad considering the next news we're going to get to in a minute. Um, but yeah, no, again, if you ever get the chance to check out VR, by all means, absolutely do it. I do, if I recall correctly, if you go to any of the FGO road tour stops, I believe that they will have it there. They have like VR stations set up. So if you are at a con that has the FGO road tour, stop by their booth. I believe you can be, you can mess around with the VR at that. Okay. So, uh, definitely check that out if you ever get the chance. The VR was pretty cool. That was my first experience with VR as well. Like, I'd never done VR before. Nice. Like this. Nice. Uh, and having uh, Saber sit next to me was pretty cool. <laughs> and feeding her. Feeding oh, her was cool. nice. Oh, God. I know you're a big fan of her eating. So. Yes, I love it when Saber <laughs> does nothing but eat. It's just too bad they didn't have any burgers. Don't you? Her and I have, are like, man, I love hamburgers, so. <laughs> yeah, she's like second to rent. <laughs> so, I'm... I also am going to just touch briefly on Extella because I actually... So I got Devil May Cry on Thursday night, same night I went to go see Heaven's Field Part 2. And then on Friday I got my copy of Extella. So same boat. I haven't played Extella. I saw that uh, Kita Sean on YouTube, I think this morning, maybe last night, he put up a video of pretty much like his first playthrough segment uh, where he got to Charlemagne and all that. So it sounds like he's already getting ahead of the game. So I have some homework to get to. So... Uh, in between now and the next podcast, I will put in some time on both Devil May Cry and Fate Stella and come back. And uh, I did. Someone also showed the sh- shared the scene of Medusa stealing uh, Hakuno from Tamamo, and I laughed 
because if you go to Heaven's Feel, especially part two, and you're not a Medusa fanboy or fangirl, by the end of it, you might be dead on the inside. I have always loved Asaka- Asakura Yu, and she's Medusa. She's actually all the Medusas. So she is Medusa, Steno, Uriel, Medusa Lily, and Gorgon. She does all of them. All was that five? Yeah, I think that was five. Five. She does all of them. And, you know, as Medusa, it's like my Medusa is level seventy. I hope yours is an FGO as well, and there's no reason why she shouldn't be. So, um I will I have some homework to do. I have to get in some quality time on Extella. Uh and Extella is the Muso style beat 'em up. It's yes. made by Marvelous. They're the guys that do like Senron Kagura, and they also did the Hyper Dimension Neptunia beat 'em up too, okay. which was also done in the same style. You know, it's a Muso, uh, but in Extella, it's a direct sequel to Extella from about two years ago, three years ago. Which I still need to finish because I have that. Yeah, and so it's a sequel to that. But then they introduced more FGO characters like Skasaha, Arjuna. Uh, the new character Charlemagne is completely original. But because Charlemagne is Astolfo's boss, they put in Astolfo. So Astolfo is in there. Um, and then uh, all the other characters are all returning. So was it Janu is also back because she was in the last one. Nartoria is in there because she was in the last one. Altera, Tammy, Tamamo, Gawain, all of them are all in there. So Karna is also back. That's why Arjuna is in there. So Gilgamesh. So yeah. And some of the DLC costumes, if you guys haven't seen them either, are pretty dope. I particularly like Emiya with his long samurai hair. I think that that actually looks pretty pretty rad. That's his DLC costume, I believe. Nice. So um, that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so Extella, i got to get some hands t- say hands on time with it. And I will report back. I'm probably going to put like 50 hours into it. And uh, if, if Nero isn't your waifu, then I feel bad for you. Umu. You already feel bad for me. So. Umu. Umu all the way, man. We can just add that to the list. Umu Nation. <laughs> I mean, so. even though I have some Nero stuff. As you should. But then again, I got a lot more Saber stuff. <laughs> so, um, actually, I did want to discuss, uh, speaking of Umu, the uh, the Fade Extra CCC event in FGO. But uh, more so just in, in general general FGO chat real quick. Um, currently, you know, we're doing Gouda Gouda. And I, I love Ogita. I love Nobunaga. So if you're not a no, 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 then um, <laughs> you might be dead on the inside. You should check your pulse. Um, Is that what she says? Well, so the uh, the story goes... So let's back up. First off, this is actually based off a parody manga right. that was actually called... Uh, whoa, fucking hell. What was it called? Was it Gura? I think it was called Gura Gura. And it was basically... It followed the events of the Imperial Holy Grail War, which took place during World War II. So this was set in Japan in 1945. Right. And it has Okita, who was the Imperial... Like, Imperial Saber. Nobunaga was Imperial Archer. And uh, Ryomoto Sakamoto... Or Ryoma Sakamoto, sorry. He was, like, Rider. And then Li Shu Wen was uh, Assassin, I believe. And uh, they had a couple other things. But outside of, like, the setting and the characters, everything else was just dumb. Everything was just kind of, like, goofy and a parody. <laughs> and when they created uh, Majin Saber, which is now Okita Alter, it was basically, like, Okita and Nobunaga were confronted with this super uber enemy. And they were like, oh, we have we don't know how we can defeat it. Oh, I know. Let's combine our powers. So they, like, do, a, a like, a, oh, a God, Saiyan fusion. fusion. And then the result was Okita Alter. And then they were like, what did we create? We don't know, but we'll, we won't find out. And that's how they ended the comic. <laughs> so it was just all like, Okita Alter showed up, and then they were just kind of like, what's this? And then they just, that's it. We're so, done. yeah, it was, it's just a giant parody. I actually tried to look to see if there was some scanlations, because I really wanted to read the Gouda Gouda manga, because it's just a giant parody. It's just a giant joke. Um, but... I couldn't. I was unable to. That's also where they have like Hijikata, and Hijikata is like Berserker. He's the um, like the Imperial Berserker. So, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty good. It was fun stuff. Um, and this is preparation because Gouda Gouda Two, I believe, will be about a week or so after the end of this one, and so that's when Hijikata will be the next five star banner. So you're gonna have to pay for him. Uh-huh. But you get Chacha, who is Nobunaga's niece. 
that's your next welfare servant. So, you know, she's the tiny little cute thing. She loves desserts, but she's a berserker. So, you know, treat her nice. Um, it's also a different format in terms of the missions because it's uh, the first time we get like the competing missions where doing one mission raises the the bar for a particular score and then when you do missions in another area or another region or whatever it raises the score in another side so you know and then you basically get an ending depending on so it's going to be the same format they're going to do for our summer event as well <clears throat> so that'll be introduced in the uh, good good 2 event um so i'm looking forward to that cool um but more so even more so i i have a brief story because I am really, really, I don't know if Roman has seen this on my Facebook over the last, well, for a while now. I love, say, Shonen Kiara from Fate Extra CCC. And she is a galactic thought. Like, she's not just a thought. She's a thought on a galactic level. Okay, like y'all, y'all talking about Captain Marvel saving the universe. Captain Marvel can't stop the galactic thought. I have seen these, yeah, on your page. You've seen my Kiata pictures? I think so. Oh man, and there, I actually shared a, a cosplayer too from a couple days ago, last some last week. And so, Kiata is amazing. I love Kiata. And if you guys don't love Kiata, it's probably because you need to go play Catherine and play C Catherine, and then you'll kind of understand Kiata a little bit more. And so, Japan just had, well, last month, they had a rerun of the Fate Extra CCC event. Fate Extra CCC is the sequel on PSP of Fate Extra. And they, the creator, I think it was Nasu himself or herself, actually said uh, CCC was like the Heaven's Feel version of Fate Extra. So it's kind of like same universe and some of the same characters, but it's an alternate take. So the ending won't be the same. Some of the things, some of the events might not be the same. So in FGO, they turned it into an FGO event. <clears throat> so this was like year two. So this came out in 2017 for Japan. But <clears throat> in 2018, they, did, they didn't do a rerun. And everyone thought that, oh, they're going to do a rerun. But they never did until now. And so I brushed it off. I just, I just ignored it. I ignored it. And, I, <laughs> and you get BB... The, who is one of the Sakura Five personalities? She's like the mischievous one. She's the Moon Cancer because she infected the Holy Grail of the Moon, you know, the, the Moon Cell Holy Grail, and she's the mischievous personality of Mato Sakura. And you get her for free for completing the whole event. And so when the rerun happened, I don't know what I did. I just I ignored it. I just didn't do it. And then last Saturday, when it was like what about a little bit more than 24 hours to go i officially started the event <laughs> on my japanese account and in in about 24 hours i completed 70 out of 100 missions wow and that wasn't good enough because you have to in order to complete the event spoilers you have to beat kiara in a boss fight and I did not know that Kiata comes in at you with 18 buffs that essentially just make her you just you just can't win. And so you get a separate currency for completing the event to take into the item shop and then you buy the debuffs which basically nullify her buffs in the boss fight. And I didn't know that that was a gameplay mechanic. I didn't know that that's what you had to do. I thought I was just cruising along like on all the other previous ones, like the Magical Girl Elia event. You just go in, you beat up the boss a couple times, boom, you get, you're done. I didn't know you needed to farm the event. And then some of these missions were like kill 180 of the same enemy. I didn't have time for that. <laughs> maybe if I didn't go to sleep, maybe I would have had time for that. But I didn't have time for that. And so I... I horribly and stupendously failed the first time I failed I've never failed before and I failed to get BB because my own galactic thought stood in my way and I tried <laughs> I honestly tried you can't even get you don't even get the option to continue in the boss fight if you lose you don't get the option to continue until you buy it from the shop you have to buy it continue you have to you have to buy the option to continue oh from the shop 
That's just how they designed it. They you you just need to complete the event over and over, and you grind it for the money that you exchange in the shop because you don't need to buy all the debuffs. Right. But if you do buy all the debuffs, the last debuff that's unlocked is the option to continue if you die or you wipe in the boss fight. You can continue. Use a you know use your command seals or use a, a quartz to revive. Right. Um. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, I completely went in there with no idea that that's how the the boss fight was staged, and I you know I went balls to the walls, pedal to the metal, and it wasn't good enough. Tried so hard, and in the end, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. So now more than ever, I want revenge. <laughs> so now, um, probably in about a month. So literally in a month. After Guda Guda 2 is done and over with, you get about a week or so buffer, and then we're going to get our own Fade Extra CCC event. And when that happens, and I have my legit squad, because my, my Japanese team is not that good. I'll admit that. I'll be the first one to tell you. They're not that great. It, they're, they're cool and all. I got King Protea. She's adorable, <laughs> but, you know, she has no support. My guys in, in my Japanese account are just not, you know. I have some good guys, but this it's nothing nothing really to write home about. Like not like my USA account. My USA account pretty pretty solid. Um but yeah, I'm now I'm motivated to quote Virgil. Um I I I never saw it coming and you know, I I don't know. I guess I underestimated uh D- Delightworks and how they built these 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 missions this event. So wow. but um now, now, like I said, it, it's it's kind of the push that I need because <clears throat> I need to get revenge now because I didn't I I need to get BB and so actually before I, I close out on the Fade Extra CCC event here, my I propose a question to you all: If you know who BB is, you've done this event, or you know who the character is, are you a pro BB or are you a anti BB? And what I mean by that is when she comes at you and she's like BB Chan des, do you think that that's cute, or do you think that she should be punched in the face? Because there's two types of people, <laughs> and I want to know which type you are. Be sure to respond in the comments. I look forward to seeing you. Maybe we should make that a poll in the group or something. Maybe. So, that's that's about it for the for my FGO game talk. Good luck with your event. Good luck with your CCC event. I'm sure that we'll talk about this later on. I'll t- I'll touch back in with you guys. Um, I do want to talk about Heaven's Field, but real quick before that. They did release more key visuals from the Babylonia anime. Yes, they did. Um, I don't know if they specifically said when it's coming out yet. They're still keeping that under wraps, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that we're getting that in the fall because the Waver anime they're still saying is summer. And I really don't think <clears throat> they're going to do two Fate animes at the same time. Yeah, I don't want to detract from one. Yeah, I, I don't see them doing that. And I don't even know if Babylonia is going to be 12 or 24. I would assume 24. All the other ones have been 24, right? Yeah. Well, Unlimited Blade Works was like 50. Oh, was it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Unlimited Blade Works went forever. Um, but yeah, Zero was like 24, 26. And original Stay Night was like 24, 26. Yeah. So, uh, the Babylonian anime. And it looks pretty solid. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, it's Clover Works, so it's a fairly new studio. Again, they're currently doing the Ace Attorney anime, so if you're a Phoenix Wright fan and you're watching it... That's the same studio that's doing the Babylonia anime. And they're an offshoot of A1 Studios. So it, uh, I, I think that they'll do a decent job. Again, it, we won't really know until you know the animation comes out. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be huge amounts of like backlash and people just be like, ah, it looks like crap. But you know, I'm still going in with an open mind. Um, I completed the Shinjuku chapter. And I think that personally, the Shinjuku chapter is probably my favorite. To date so far so um yeah i'm looking forward to the babylonia anime and the camelot ova when that comes out too i know that roman he's sadistic so he'll enjoy watching poor mordred get beat up but yeah yeah you didn't have to say yeah <laughs> but <laughs> i didn't have to but but you know it's it's evil mordred so you know i mean there's a not evil mordred uh yeah Mordred is not evil. Mordred is cute and adorable and the true king. Are we talking about the same Mordred? Yeah. Only Mordred that matters. I don't think we are. <laughs> so. 
Uh, I will keep you all updated if there's any more Fate Babylonia news in the meantime. I hope that you guys are all excited and looking forward to that. And the other reason why I am excited is because, <laughs> once again, I saw Heaven's Fill on Thursday night when it came out. <clears throat> well, it didn't debut. So it had actually come out on the FGO Road Tour previously in L.A. That's when it had its, its grand debut. And the voice actress for Mato Sakura was there at the event. And <clears throat> she actually went to the screening. And she actually did an intro to the uh, the audience. She actually said, you know, oh, you know, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting the franchise. You know, all the, the normal stuff. Yeah. And so that was pretty cool. And if you were, and if you saw, you know, a lot of people actually left the road tour. I saw some people in FGO actually make it their message, their little message on their profile saying, you know, oh, Heaven's Feel 2 is amazing. It's great. It's wonderful. And I was like, well, I already know that. You don't need to tell me that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be great. So... Uh, we saw it on Thursday when it kind of was like released nationwide, um, and it, it first off the theater itself. Our theater that we saw it in wasn't full, but I was reading stories afterwards that some people had to drive out like almost two three hours to get to a theater, and then that their theater was sold out. But then I also saw some photos of theaters that were just like empty. So, um, <laughs> some theaters were sold out. I don't, ours was not sold out. We had seats still kind of throughout the top area. And, of course, towards the bottom, which is right in front of the screen, wide open. So, you know, ours wasn't sold out. But um, it was a, was a solid turnout. And I, I think that they definitely made some money <clears throat> on it. And it was like it was across the country. It was coast to coast uh, that, that they showed the movie. Yeah. Um, and so... They opened the movie with an intro with the voice actor for Shiro and the voice actress for Sakura. <clears throat> and she said the greatest thing, which was she was at the L.A. premiere because she actually filled in for the voice actress for Tosaka Rin because uh, she had actually gotten sick. And a week before she was supposed to come out for the FGO road tour, she actually got discharged from the hospital. So about... Two weeks before she canceled. And I don't know if they had always intended for Mato Sakura to be there as well. Maybe like as a surprise or something. But when uh, the Tosaka Rin, she couldn't go. Uh, I believe it's Noriko Shitaya or Shitaya Noriko, I think is her name. The Mato Sakura, she came in. And so she went over there. And so she did a special little like intro before the movie. And she was talking about how she was actually at the L.A. premiere during the FGO Road Tour. And she was caught off guard about how expressive the American audience was during the movie. Like, she said that people laughed, people applauded, and people kind of, like, jeered or, like, moaned and made sounds when something was going on that they liked or didn't like. And she's all like, that really was shocking because in Japan... No one makes a noise. Like, everyone just kind of sits there and watches it. And I was all like, yeah, no, Americans are assholes. <laughs> We're like that. We make noise in our theaters. We just, it's just how it is. And, you know, I don't, and I don't think that's like a, like a California thing or a, like a middle of the country Nebraska thing or a New York thing. No, that's everywhere. Yeah. Americans are like that. It's almost like a sporting event, you know? When your team's winning, you cheer. When your team is losing, you boo. Or the other team is winning, you boo. You know, so it's kind of like that. You know, you get into it. You, you absorb it. And you get caught up in the fun and the nature of it. So, um, yeah, and I just was like, yeah, of course we're expressive. We're assholes. We're Americans. Same thing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that, so that, that happened. So then the movie actually started, and it's kind of hard to spoil it because it, even though I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's been out forever now, you can go and read the visual novel or the manga or read synopsis and all that, but it really is something that you got to watch. And UFO, Tab, UFO, UFO Table, however you will pronounce their name, they're pretty on it. And I feel that Type Moon only busting them out for events like this is pretty smart because they they actually she actually mentioned it in that same preview that Ufotab busted out some of the cutting edge uh, animation technology 
And you see it in like like the f- fight scene between Berserker and Saber Alter. You see it. It's really like this seamlessness between CG and, and hand drawn and animation. And they they really were on it. They really delivered. And so, in terms of, again going back to the story, I kind of went off on a tangent there. <laughs> um, I don't know. Some it's I I feel that I haven't I never finished Unlimited Blade Works, so I don't know, but. In term, I have seen the original Stay Night, the Saber story, and I have seen Heaven's Feel 1. I've read a little bit about it too previously, and the Socket of Root. And I, I do, I'm not a big Rin person per se. I love Ishtar, not too big on Rin though, but I am at some point, I'm going to need to force myself to watch Unlimited Blade Works. But I think that I like the Mato Socket of Root all, all the best. And I, I hesitate to say that because. A lot of people will, will be like, oh yeah, the Sakura Root's the best, or the Sakura Root is the most viable, or whatever. And it's because, well, sometimes you get like that because it's the most recent one. Not necessarily because it's the best one, but it's the one that's the freshest in your mind. It's in the front of your mind. So it just kind of pushes everything to the back. So even though you might be kind of blinded because you're just like, oh yeah, it's so exciting, yeah. It, you know. But I am going to say that it, it was solid. And... As much shit as I give Saber, I'm still going to give shit to Saber. Saber Alter. In between that fight scene in the movie, part two, and then what happened in Shinjuku, a little bit of respect. Just a little bit. Don't get too cocky. You know, just, a little, <laughs> just a little bit. But I mean, everyone already kind of was already like that. Everyone is like, not everyone is a Saber default, like Artoria fan, but pretty much everybody is a Saber Alter fan. And even though I'm not, I'm not with you guys just yet, you all got me on this year's summer. I am going to roll for Saber Alter Made. I am rolling for that. So... And I, I asked my friend that too. I was like, "Was Saber Alter made? Is that from Carnival Phantasm?" Because there was a scene where Saber just, you know, put on a made outfit and it just became Alter and just started being a dickhead to everybody. And everyone was just like loving it. They were like, "Oh, you know, step on me more, Queen, King." And so it was like I thought that, and it, it was like literally the design. And she has the like the bu- the bucket and the broom. And so I thought that that they stole that from Carnival Phantasm, um, but. Yeah, I, I can I can I can see. I can definitely understand why not everybody is an Artoria fan, but everybody is a Salter fan. I get it. I see that. I'm still not completely on board with that, but you you really couldn't walk away from that fight scene and not be like, damn. And and on top of that, <laughs> what was funny too was that a friend, I think he was rolling for Okita like previously. And he didn't get Okita, but he got like an NP4, like a level 4 Hercules. And I said that Hercules is great. I, I, I actually have like, I've gotten like 8 or 9 Hercules. He keeps coming to me. I can't even use him anymore. But I, I said that I wanted to level up his bond because when you max out his bond, he gives you an item that basically gives you revive times 3. So he gets killed and comes back to life 3 times. Okay. And that's part of his lore because, you know, Hercules did the 12 labors and, you know, he couldn't die until he completed the labors right? and all of that. And so how they translate that into the fate lore is that you have to kill Herc like 12 times. But he's, he's Hercules. He's half god. Yeah. So how do you kill a half god 12 times? How do you kill Kevin Sorbo 12 times? <laughs> well, technically 13 because he well, comes back yeah. to life 12 times and then the 13th time he stays dead. Yeah. So in in the game he has um he has a default revive, so that's already one, and then his uh special bond ability gives him three. So yeah, he um he basically just that's why he's he's regarded so highly because he's so hard to kill. And it's like until he's dead and stays dead, he can just come out and just smash you. And so they did a, a pretty good job of illustrating that. In Heaven's Field 2. And I, I didn't see it coming. I It was just kind of like, whoa. That whole scene was just kind of like, really wow. And all things considered, there weren't too many action scenes. There was probably like two or three really big action scenes. Okay. But um, 
it, it was kind of like everyone, though, it wasn't that many because everyone that did happen was kind of impactful. And it, it made sense in that context. It's like, it's not meant to be like an action like movie where it's, a, you know, like a Dragon Ball Z where there's a fight scene maybe every 10 or 15 minutes and it goes on like that for two hours. It's like, no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> Uh, there were some scenes that actually felt like they imitated uh, the cooking anime, Emiya Gohan, Emiya San Gohan, yeah. where you know every day cooking with Emiya and family. I just got my saber Nesso for that. Oh Jesus! <laughs> so yeah, it, there were some scenes in that where it was literally them just cooking, and Shido makes the joke too because uh, Medusa is just sitting there, and Medusa's like, "Well, I don't need to eat." And Shido goes, oh, Saber was eating all the time. And everyone just kind of laughed. It was like, yeah, that dumb bitch is eating all the time. So, um, yeah, there was, so, there was a lot of like that. It was kind of there. Um, there and there, there's someone that, that makes an appearance and a reference from another Fate series. Um, that is not none of the Fate Stay Night series. He's from uh, another Fate series. And even saying he might already be a spoiler. He was referenced in the last movie, too. Um, but apparently he was never in the actual state or Heaven's Feel anything. And so they kind of threw him in there as kind of a reference and an Easter egg. Um, and he's one of my favorite characters in the Fate whole franchise. So seeing him being acknowledged and spoken to and, you know, kind of acknowledged is kind of heartwarming and all that. And it's like, oh, that's right. My boy. The waiver? No. Okay. Good call. Good call. Good call. Good call, though. That's a very good, very good guess. Close, though. Very close. Okay. Uh, but no, you, you're going to get a whole waiver ep or show, so you, you got that covered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you all, yeah, you, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty surreal. Um, I, 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 so, I'm going to kind of get into it now, too, with, with the Gilgamesh, just for a bit. And if you're a Gilgamesh fan, you can kind of skip this if you want to go in completely blind. But <laughs> I love, love, love the way that they handled Gilgamesh in Heaven's Field, too. Because he, you know, I remember like 10 years ago or so when everyone was just like, oh, Gilgamesh is the most OP anime character, you know. He's in Fate, but he should be like in DBZ, just like shooting shit. Oh, he's so OP. And I'm like, what? Didn't he lose? <laughs> <laughs> and it's all like, okay. And so then, you know, you see him in, in, in Zero, and you see him in, like, Unlimited Blade Wars, and you see him, yeah, he's pretty fucking strong. Even in FGO, he's pretty solid. He's pretty good. And so you kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the way they handled him in this one, in Heaven's Field Part 2, where they really were like, you know what? If they wanted to, Gilgamesh ain't shit. And kind of, that really made me laugh. That really made because it was like you know he's running he ran around in all these different franchises and series is like you know mongrel look at me suck my balls and then in <laughs> this one they reduced him to just less than shit and um, I was just still like you know it was about time you know because he had free reign to just do whatever he wanted all these franchises all these stories you know except for like Babylonia Babylonia was the only time he was kind of like reduced. To being semi-normal so um other than that in any every almost every other portrayal of gilgamesh he was just a massive dick and a prick and annoying and dumb and fuck him but uh in this one it was almost like he got his comeuppance and it, it wasn't really how i expected it to be but i'm glad they did it and i'm glad that that happened but um i without saying specifics i'm just gonna leave it there in that regard all right. But uh, I'm glad that Gilgamesh got his. Um, yeah, I don't know what else. What else is there to say? You know, it's it's hard. It's really hard because I know that it was super limited, and I don't even know if they're going to show it again. They might show it again in like the dub. Okay. But in terms of getting to watch it again as a, on a sub, I have no idea if they're ever going to show it again. I think the next time everyone sees it, it might be on the Blu-ray. Okay. Um, there was one other thing. Yeah, no, I guess in, in it was just in, in closing, I think it was just funny that, you know, again, I was doing the CCC event, the, you know, Saturday into Sunday morning, and then four days later, I'm going and watching a movie based about Sakura, and it was like Sakura Overload, more or less, and um, you see you see Mato Sakura, and it was like, you know, I always always felt bad for, for Sakura ever since Fate Zero, you're always like, oh yeah, 
she gets treated like crap. She doesn't deserve any of that stuff. And now Sakura pretty much has the means to kind of get her her way. And you're like kind of cheering for her, but you're also kind of like stop, stop, please stop, no stop, stop. Um, and you know, and I saw some people really getting like kind of hoity toity into it, and you know, it's like. Oh, it's, it's Shido's way of betraying everything except his his love and his feelings. And it's like, yeah, but she kind of already wasted... Like, the kill count, I'm pretty sure, was at, like, 200? <laughs> and so it's kind of like... <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. This is definitely Heaven's Field. They, 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 if, if you know anything at all, they've always said Heaven's Field was the most, like, darkest route. And it's definitely not for the squeamish... And if you like, you watched all those other series. None of the other ones, honestly, were this bad. Um, but yeah, it's. I hope you guys don't have favorites, because it, it doesn't end well. It typically doesn't end well for for anybody that you enjoyed. Um, I and I, I was developing more of an appreciation for Archer Emia, and the way what Emia Archer did. He was actually, he was almost MVP. In Heaven's Field too, he did he did really stellar work, but oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> leave it at that. So uh, I'm gonna wrap it up there, I guess. Uh, Heaven's Field two, you know, if you watched it, let me know. Please respond. Uh, don't spoil it too much because Roman needs to watch it. Roman yeah. needs to watch part one. Yeah, I still need to watch part one. So Roman have, needs to watch part one. I think I have it downloaded. I okay. just haven't watched it yet. Fortunately, it's its its own route. Because, you know, there's the Saber route, the Rin route, and the Sakura route. So even though they kind of have some things similar, it also kind of, like, part one does you the favor of, like, skipping the whole intro. Like, from when, like, Shudo meets Saber to, like, he gets stabbed by uh, Kooch Lane. They right. skip all of that. They like kind of cover it through the opening credits, so they skip all that. So because you've already seen it twice, right? So they don't they don't even bother with that. So they kind of do you that favor, but then after that, then you kind of see it, um, and it is it's the visual novel style where okay. it's you know it's branching paths. Yeah. So the answers that you give is what kind of takes you down this way, or takes you down this way, or takes you down this way. So you know when he's like over here trying to confess his love to Sakura, I was like. Bitch, didn't you just confess your confess your love to Rin? Uh, you man whore. Yeah. So why are you gonna downgrade? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, he can't downgrade because then he has to go to Elia, and they haven't oh. made an Elia route. Well, they probably shouldn't. No. Well, remember Elia is legal. Is she? Yeah. In Fate Zero, she was uh, what ten years old. Uh, yeah. So she's eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Never mind that. Just legal lowly. Go for it then. Whatever. She's about your age. Actually, yeah, technically she's older. She's older than all of them. Yeah. So, technically. Even though she looks young. So that's yeah. uh, that's all I got. Um, in closing, like I said, oh, and I guess in the overall closing is that all of this, FGO, Extella, Heaven's Feel, is why FGO made $3 billion globally. Yes. $3 billion. Globally. That is a lot of money. So remember when I was telling you all that, that Bushi Road and Grand Blue Fantasy, if they weren't interested in like the international markets before, they're coming now. So, you know, <laughs> this could be both good and bad. This is this is bad because I don't want to see a decline in like the quality of games. Yeah. You know, I don't want to see this like tap three times and you know uh, it's, there's no, you know, like I, I'm coming from Devil May Cry and Nier Automata and even like the Final Fantasy games or any of those, you know, those those games with like kind of in depth gameplay that keeps you engrossed and you know you gain skills and learn new abilities and new fighting skills, those kind of like in depth things that are fun and satisfying. I don't want it to just turn into like hit three buttons and then it auto plays. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of hoping we don't go down that path, but at the same time. These kind of games on a budget, these games that you can just play like on your lunch break when you got free time or whatnot, that is pretty cool. Yeah. And when Albert advertised FGO as basically a free visual novel, he wasn't wrong. And some of the, obviously some of these stories in FGO, some are better than others, but uh, it's still a free story. And looking at like the quality of like Heaven's Feel, they're pretty solid stories. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly recommend you go watch. Go watch Heaven's Field 1. 
Heaven's Field 2, I don't know when the blu rays coming out. Maybe I'll find out any news. We'll report on a future podcast. Yep, definitely. But, uh, yeah, I think I think that's it without spoiling the movie. Cool. Yeah, I still need to see it. I, I remember you were asking if I wanted to go. And I was <laughs> like, I hadn't seen the first one yet. Got it. And I never got the chance to watch it. Got it. So, And, and as a matter of fact, I actually brought this, too, because I'll even show you. This was from the Rotor. Yeah. This is my friend got me. Oh, that's awesome. So this was exclusively made actually for AX last year. So Rio, <laughs> he's the guy that does all these. And these are the art, these portraits, these like uh, Rio artworks, these take over for the characters on April Fool's. Oh. So for one day on April 1st, all of your character portraits, when you're like looking at your party, turn into this. That's, that's awesome. So they turned into this style. And so for AX last year, they they had Rio make this one. That's why he has the Hollywood sign, and they're all like the cops and all of that. I like that Saber's eating a donut. Of course. Oh, Mr. Saber's <laughs> eating a fucking donut. And then they're, so they're arresting Da Vinci, who looks like is running away with, with gotcha, so. Yep. And then, of course, the, the Hollywood sign there, so. That's nice. So, yeah. So this, I've been wanting this ever since AX last year, but... They, they apparently sold out immediately. So this year, they actually had this available as a wall scroll, as a poster, and as a playmat. And I was like, originally they had only said wall scroll, so I was like, give me the wall scroll. But then I found out that the playmat came back, and I was like, okay, fuck the wall scroll. Give me the playmat. Because I was like, I can still put this up on, like, on my office cubicle, yeah. and it won't like be like a wall scroll, you know? Like, it's, the wall scroll is almost as, as big as your John. Nice. Yeah. So, yes. Um... Maybe we'll uh, maybe I'll take a picture and you can upload it or something. Or, yeah. So you everyone else can check this out. But yeah, this was exclusive from uh, from the Road Tour and from AX last year. So nice. I like those designs. Yeah. I love I love Rio. Rio actually became the official um, artist for the Good Smile mascots. Yeah, I remember telling me that. So yeah, yeah I mean it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's all we got for fate. That's a, yeah, I'm, that's a matter of fact, that's all I got for this podcast. Okay, I have one more thing. Shoot. And I figure I might as well do it now because, uh, you know, get this out early for all you podcast people. Uh, I am announcing what I am going to be reacting to next season. Oh boy. Uh, I only have six shows this time. Usually I have like 12. <laughs> okay. Uh, which usually is too much. <laughs> but I usually end up doing it anyway and just drop a few as I go along because they're not interesting. But this time, I only got six. Um, mainly because there's not a whole lot that I want to see next season. For now. Yeah. So, I've already stated that I'm going to watch One Punch Man Season 2. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's still on the list. That comes out on the 9th of next month. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, Isekai Quartet comes out next month as well. That's the... Uh, crossover chibi event like anime with Konosuba, Tanya, Overlord, and ReZero. So I am watching that. Uh, I'm going to be watching the remake of Fruits Baskets. Uh, I had never seen the original. Mm. Um, but I'm going to be watching this one. Because I remember a guy in the comments of one of my videos asked if I'd ever seen it. And I said no. And they announced the remake so I was like I'll just watch that. I'm sure it's going to be the same, just updated animation. Correct. Uh, an anime called Sibuyaki Kitsune no Senko-san, which is about a little fox spirit, or goddess, mm -hmm. that starts taking care of this human. Like, she, like, makes his meals, she uh, does all kinds of different things for him because she feels like he's... he deserves it. It's a cute little anime. Uh, and the... Little Fox Spirit is for all those Lolly fans because she's like a, a Lolly. Of course. Um, an anime called Joshi Kosai. Mm -hmm. It's. There's no dialogue whatsoever. Uh, but it's really, really funny. I've read a little bit of the manga. And. Cinderella 9, which is a baseball. Uh, girls' baseball team mm -hmm. anime. Interesting. Also sports, and I figure I need to get into more sports stuff. So good that's job. all. Good all job. I'm picking up next season. Okay, sounds like a good lineup. Yep, and it it shouldn't be too hard to do all these, especially since I have less time to do stuff. <laughs> so I should be able to keep keep up with this. Nice. 
However, if you all do have something you want me to check out, let me know, and I'll see if I can add it to the list. What about you? Are you picking up anything, or...? Uh, you know, I usually get my recommendations from meme pages, so I'll just wait for that. I mean, from your list, I can definitely agree with you on One Punch Man. Yeah. Definitely going to be there. Um, Saitama, by the way, is the same voice actor as Achilles from Everything Fate, Apocrypha, oh. and now an FGO. So. Oh, he's also the uh, same guy that does uh, the main character in Kaguya, the dude. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he does, nice. uh, he does that guy. Nice. I found that out a couple days ago. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because <laughs> I was looking up all the voice actors, like, who have they done before? Because some of these... And I looked him up and I said, Saitama. And I was like, what? Ah. One Punch Man? That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's. I guess you'll figure out when the memes come out, what yep. you're going to watch. And that's what, I'll, that's what I'll be talking about. And uh, I guess that might be a couple weeks before they show up, huh? Like a week or so before they come out? Yeah. Okay, so we'll get back to what Steve's going to watch. Got it. But... Um, I think that's it for this podcast. Uh, you don't have anything else? No. Again, as always, guys, feel free to comment. We're going to get some timestamps up so you guys can jump around, see what interests you the most. Yep. Feel free to comment, like. Again, 6,000 subscribers, we'll do a giveaway. Yep. Check out Roman's reaction videos. Those are all coming soon. Uh-huh. And if you guys have, are anticipating anything next season, also, just uh, feel free to post that up. Yeah. Let us know what you're going to watch. So, uh, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day once again. Take care. We'll see you again in about uh, the next podcast. Yep, about two weeks. Maybe. Depends on our schedules. Sounds good. See you then. Yep. Bye.